and there's water on the old highway today. It's been raining hard, but that will not stop the faithful. They have sold out Memorial Stadium for 214 consecutive times. Their beloved Cornhuskers are a three touchdown favorite to make it to the championship. This senior class is awesome. It was introduced moments ago and a hug from head coach Tom Osborne. They have gone 45 and two with back-to-back -back national championships. On the other side, not much enthusiasm and this is planned. Rick Neuheisel has been preaching all week. This is a business trip. We will not be jumping up and down until it's over. Let's enter Memorial Stadium with unfinished business at hand, get the job done, and then we'll be on the road to St. Louis. The stakes have never been higher for both Colorado and Nebraska. ABC Sports. They've mailed the invitations to the bowl games, and we're not on the invitation list. He says, well, we're going to crash the party, something that I've done before. All right, Jack. That means that Nebraska kicks it off here with Chris Brown, a very talented, long-range kicker. And we will see what kind of depth he gets in this weather. Beautiful. It'll come out on the 20-yard line. Senior Coy Detmer from Mission, Texas. Folks, he's been here before against Nebraska, and it has not been pretty. Something to prove as he was intercepted a total of three times and sacked five in his two appearances. Our Chili's backs and receivers. Herschel Troutman. Can Colorado run the ball? Troutman would be the key, number five. Well, I'll tell you this. They plan to run the ball if they can there, Brent, and they want to start out that way. They will open up with a tight end to the right side of the formation, and then Detmer will change the call. But he wanted Troutman to stay right there. Having trouble hearing, Troutman squeezes a couple of yards out of the middle of that offensive line. And here is the offensive line. Nioli, his big guard, was trying to move the pile there. Number 65, Kyle Smith, 52, the other guard. And the center's Adam Reed. Now, the defensive story today, and it's a good one. Look at the bottom, Terrell Farley. Their great linebacker is gone. He's suspended and will not play today. It means that they will have to replace one of the best players on that defensive front. Play fake Decker hit on the release. That's how little time he has against this defense. So Farley comes off the defense, and it means that Mike Minter the strong safety will frequently step up to that outside linebacking spot and Octavius McFarland is going to be there at safety. Basically, Dick, a form of nickel will be used here by Coach McBride. Well, then against this style of offense, Brent, that's a real advantage. Now two tight ends for Colorado. Third down and long. Detmer gets his time and passes to the near side over here to the 32-yard line, and that will be enough. It was Ray Caruth, number 21, with his first reception. He did a beautiful job of keeping his feet in. Brent stopped, came back, then stretched up for the football, and both toes were in that foul line. So the ball is on the Colorado 32-yard line. First down, Buffalo. Troutman, hole on the left side, and he burst through for seven yards. Big yep. hole on that left side. There was a hole there, and then number 10, Michael Minner, who's the safety you mentioned, Brent, up playing outside linebacker for the first time in his career, had to take on a great big offensive lineman. Did a pretty good job, but he got his fanny whipped anyway. Well, clearly the Colorado coaches now have seen that change. It had not been publicized as to what McBride was going to do with Minter, and they will try to get at him with the run. Oh, I'm sure they will, Brent. They haven't given much up in the last seven games, as you can see by that graphic. Using Troutman on a draw play. Big hole again. 
and it is close to midfield for another Colorado first down. Now that there is one thing that the Buffaloes must do when you come into Lincoln, and that is run the football. Well, and they run the football here. It's a draw, and they run it a quick draw, Brent. They move the fullback up in close to the line of scrimmage so he can hit the draw a little bit quicker, and it paid off right there. They want to establish the run to slow down the pass rush. Johannig Meyer, number 81, brings the play in from Rick Neuheisel's sideline. He is the tight end. He is the run blocker of the group. They go with a slot left double tight end, and they hang in here with Troutman on a play fake. Detmer getting time. Fires complete to the 36-yard line. So Detmer starts out and completes his first two passes. That time he hit Chris Anderson, and he is the 6'4 junior wide receiver. You see the slot formation. Now they're going to run combination patterns in there. The inside guy pulls the short defender out. He turns back inside and drives in the ball, but good rhythm, good timing. Now the brass will try to disrupt that timing with a good inside rush from their tackle. Dick, what's impressive so far is that Detmer's getting time from his offensive line. They're he using was only hurried on the one incompletion. And on first down, here's Troutman picking his way, and that time he was jammed up, perhaps a yard, but certainly nothing more than that. Carl Dunbar, the offensive coordinator for Colorado, told me he's going to use the tight ends to help on the defensive ends, help the offensive tackle, and they're doing that effectively right now, so they're going to have to get some rush from the inside. So the winner of this game will play Texas in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship next Saturday in St. Louis. Here comes second and nine for Detmer and the Buffaloes. Sticking with the two tight ends to help out on the blocking. Detmer short oh. drop fires complete, and he's coming right back into Anderson's hands. It was defended by Eric Warfield, who made that hit number three. You run those slant patterns as a receiver, you know you're going to get hit inside by the safety. Here comes Eric Warfield, right side of your screen, pads down, and nails it. Hefner brings the play in for the sideline. Detmer and the Buffaloes need three yards on this third down. Short drop again. Deflected incomplete. That was Hess, number 44, the middle linebacker who is there defensively. He's a real good football player and a very smart football player. He's strong enough at 250 pounds to move up and play right nose on a guard, and they do that, and he's got the ability to leap and back the ball back like he just did there, Brent. Now, here comes a big change for Colorado. Here at the far right side of your screen, you'll see him leap. Right, good rhythm. He's just up there and right on time. Smart football player. Aldridge is in as the kicker. Jeremy Aldridge gets the first call. The first so Neuheisel makes a change, and Rosga puts it down, and he goes after the 45-yarder. Hits and goes across. The first bounce goes for the Buffaloes. He hit the crossbar, and it bounced over. A 45-yard field goal. It's 3-0 Colorado. Is luck be a lady tonight. Very important. I don't have to tell anybody that. In a big game, just score first. And you can see that overwhelming statistic. Now, we talked about Aldridge kicking the field goal. But on the kickoffs, they will stick with the barefooted one. Jason Leslie. And again, Rick Neuheisel was interested in the fact that Leslie, when he kicks off, puts the shoe on. But when he kicks the field goals, he takes it off. And I asked the coach about that, and he said, well, you know, he's a kicker. <laughs> and that explains everything, <laughs> believe me. There we go. He sheds the shoe, and here he comes. This is D'Angelo Evans, the talented freshman from the 14-yard line, and he will give Scott Frost of the Nebraska offense decent field position at the 26-yard line. Here comes the young man who's been improving all season long. The Cornhuskers lost a tough one in Tempe, Arizona, to Arizona State. But since then, the numbers look pretty good. 
13 touchdown passes and our Chili's backs and receivers. Amon Green has been struggling this season with turf toe. He says he's 100%. So we'll get the first call and certainly Colorado and Nebraska fans remember the first play from scrimmage a year ago in Boulder when Amon Green took off for a touchdown. He gets the call, no touchdown this time, and not much doing. That was number 77, Mau Mau, who has played very well, working against, again, another outstanding offensive line. There is Taylor, number 67. He'll play both center and guard. Eric Anderson there, number 70, according to the coaches, is the most underrated of the five. So second down and 10. Black, the safety up tight for Colorado. Option cross, late pitch. Green slips in the water. Rosga took the pitch man, but Green slipped down at the 32. A.J. Kristoff, defensive coordinator, Colorado, has him in an eight-man front, meaning they're bringing eight people up in position to defense the run initially. The eighth man up on top gets blocked by the wide receiver. That's why they're able to get outside and get a pitch, and you can see that he just slips in the astroturf. Nobody runs the options any better than Nebraska. Lance Brown and Cheatham are the wide receivers to cross left. No tight end. It's a three-pack, and they run the option out of it. They put the ball back in Green's hands, and a great tackle. Fumble! Colorado has got it over here on the 35-yard line. Buffaloes recover on the game's first turnover. That is Black, the strong safety who has come up to press and is one of the hardest hitters on this Colorado team. What a positive start for a team that has won 10 straight on the road. They come right down the line of scrimmage up, and we call this a load option. He flips it out there. He has the lead blocker out there. Now in from behind him, there comes Jones and strips it. The ball's on the ground, and there they are. They take the ball away. Now, Nebraska has done a great job uh, in these situations of shutting down an offense. In contrast, Colorado has done a great job of taking advantage of it. This will be a battle. Now the Colorado coaches make a change. They load with a fullback. They have fits, and they're going to isolate and try to get something going with Foley gone and the black shirts, as the Nebraska defense is called, swarm all over him that time. They were equal to the task. So right away, the game of cat and mouse continues amongst the assistant coaches here. No question. They're going to have a hard time, Colorado and that is, of pulling offensive linemen because Nebraska's defensive line attack and read on the move. And that's what happened that time. They pulled two offensive linemen. They couldn't get the defender cut off. He comes in the backside and throws a throw off. Now in a passing formation, Neuheisel with one tight end and one running back. Detmer will step to the left. No time. Gets it off. Incomplete as he turned back. There's the penalty flag. He was under enormous pressure from Jason Peter, number 55. Jason Peter is a load to block. He came into the ball game with four sacks, 12 quarterback carries. He's right here on this side of your screen in a three-point stance. He will attack on the ball. There he goes. They block down on him. They don't get down on him quick enough. He is awfully quick, as I said earlier, Brent. Thanks, the guys. On the defense. And it's five yards from the three So the face mask penalty. Jason comes to play. Well, <laughs> came to play a little too hard that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the five-yard penalty moves the ball up to the 30-yard line, and it is second down and five. So we've had three breaks in this game. A field goal, bounce over the crossbar, an early turnover by Nebraska. Now a face mask penalty makes it second and five, and Troutman blasts through strong running for the first down. Moving a whole pile, the young man from Naples, Florida, gives Colorado a first down at the 20-yard line. They did a good job of pulling an internal offensive lineman. The center snaps, comes around, they get the ball back there deep, and he takes him right up through the hole. An excellent power running by a little five foot seven, 195-pound guy with a lot of guts. Now Fisk is back in at fullback. He'll line up directly behind Detmer. Nebraska presses defensively, and Troutman is hit right away by number 93, Jared Tomich. 
Now the story about Tomich is he's playing with anger today. He feels that he was snubbed by the Big 12 coaches who left him off the old defensive team. In fact, Jared Tomich, a finalist for the Lombardi Award, made only the third team. <laughs> Go figure. I, don't, I asked him about that the other day in the office, and he said, Coach, I really sincerely don't care. I just want to play on a winning football team on Saturday afternoon. Second down and 13. Play fake Trotman. Detmer with time. In zone. And it's broken up. It was broken up by Ralph Brown. They went after the freshman cornerback on that side, and he was equal to the task against Ray Carruth. You see Brown, number two, middle of your screen. See, he's got the short flat outside, no one in front of him, so he drops back and does a great job of getting back there and helping Eric Warfield, number three. An excellent job, excellent coaching by the secondary coach to teach him, know what he in front of you, fall back and help your safety. Excellent, job, excellent throw as well, Brent. It was there, just couldn't be done. Third down and 13. A three-pack to the right. And the tight end. This formation, as they go empty, puts everybody on the right side. Offensive line holds. Snap really complete. And that was number 22 again, Ralph Brown. He was up, bump and run. Did a great job reaching around with his left arm and just flipped it away. They went after the right guy. He's got the inside position on him. He's going to throw the ball. He's got his right hand on him. He reaches in, pow, knocks it away. And the tight end, Tennyson McCarty, went down the hole wide open, and he didn't see him, Brent. This has to be somewhat discouraging to Colorado and its coaching staff to have field position like that. Jeremy Aldridge, who kicked the 45-yarder, is now setting up see if he can add a 40-yarder. Remember, this is the first game he's ever kicked in for Colorado. And it will not be his last. It's 6-0 as Jeremy Aldrich puts two field goals on the board. But Nebraska frees a sigh of relief that they didn't give up a touchdown. Dodge, it's about change. Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who reminds you fresh beer tastes better. Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. And Dr. Pepper in your local Dr. Pepper Baba. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship game next Saturday in St. Louis. Texas has qualified as the winner of the South. And the winner here moves on. Colorado changes field goal specialists and winds up with a 6-0 lead. And you know, you and I were both second-guessing that decision. It had come with a brand-new kicker at the end of the year that's never kicked in the game, but it's worked out positive, a good decision by New Heidel and his staff. And emotionally, that's got to be a big lift for the rest of the squad because they now know they can make a field goal. Colorado needs a little more depth on the kickoff if they can get it here. And this one is a little deeper. Evans back at the three-yard line. They push him to the middle. And Evans, the freshman running back from Kansas, out to the 25-yard line. So let's go through the Colorado defense and take a look at the fellows who will try to keep this outstanding offense in check. There you see Greg Jones, number 59. He was very active on that turnover. Created a big play for him already. And of course, Matt Russell, a talented linebacker. Number two, Damon Wheeler, the freshman corner's in there, Brent. And Benning's the running back. And there's a penalty flag thrown on the play. So after the fumble by Green, the coaches switch to number 21, Damon Benning, the senior from Omaha Northwest. Well, he's got a lot of experience. He's carried the ball 268 times in his career. He's a senior, yes, but he's, you know, almost as efficient running the ball, averaging 5.5 yards a carry. So he knows where the end zone with those seven touchdowns he scored this year. And no one calls the plays any better than this guy. It was going to take him a little while to adjust to the eight-man front that Colorado was thrown at him. When you have an eight-man front, that means they're only three deep. Look for him to go some play-action passing. Well, it's first and 15. Tim Carpenter is the tight end. He is to cross left. Again, three wide receivers and the whistle.
County before the snap. Roska is the defensive ringleader here as we. Uh, Dead ball, both starts, offense. Brent, that's amazing. They've only had five offensive line penalties all year. Now they get one. So there you see the leader. Now Ryan Black, Dick has been telling you about the change defensively. That eight man front and Black is up there pressing. But of course they'll figure to slough off here now. It is first and 20. With Colorado spreading them out now with a three receiver look. And Jeff Lake is off to the left. Cross wanted to run, slip now regains his balance and makes a good gain. Looked like a bit of a disaster when he quickly slipped, but he ran out to the 28-yard line. See, as soon as you notice eight-man front, you want to spread the defense as much as you can. He goes back there in the draw. As you said, he slipped, but a great athlete. This young man is a tremendous athlete, and his passing has really improved. Last four games, 10 touchdowns, one interception. A 14-yard gain for Frost, and that will leave the Huskers in second and six. Holbein... And Brown, Lance Brown, are the wide receivers off to Frost right. The tight end to the left. They can option either direction if they want to. Frost wants to throw high and complete. And that could be a situation where the wet ball got the better of Frost that time. He is not the slickest passer you have ever watched. And if there is a real significant change offensively, it is the fact, of course, that Nebraska does not have Tommy Frazier to fall back on. But Frost, an excellent runner. He has improved in the passing department. And Osborne now making his decision on third and six. They'll run a double tight end formation. Benning still the tail. They run him on the draw into the middle. Broke a tackle, but he appears to be just short of that first down. Ryan Olson. An all Big 12 defensive tackle, three-point stance right there. They block back on him and step around, but he fights back up here and it prevents the first down. But this offensive line for Nebraska is so physical. You defensive linemen, they have to keep their pads down, and Ryan Olson can do that. Not only does he keep his pads down, he's an outstanding student. Civil engineering, 3.5 GPA. Nunez set to return Jesse Cush's punt. Cush is an interesting story. He has studied meteorology here in Lincoln, and so he had the last weather forecast and said we could expect some of this rain to turn to snow. Takes a bounce on Nunez, fielded at the 19-yard line by the freshman. Nothing doing. He'll go right down at the 16-yard line. So a good punt by Cush and excellent coverage by Nebraska. Colorado's ahead by two field goals. McCann pitched the ball to Derrick Brown, who took it in for the seventh. And the game was tied with 6.40 to go. Then the Huskers, winning field goal attempt, but it was blocked. And Colorado tied Nebraska at 19. That was back in 1991. Now the Buffs come up, leading by six in Lincoln, where the Corn Huskers have won 35 straight games. Troutman, the running back. Detmer on first down, deflected, intercepted. Number 56 scores. And just like that, the Huskers have tied it. Boy Detmer at six foot one, setting in a shorter drop at a five foot, a five step drop. You know, Brent. In it, any penetration at all, that's tough. So Foreman goes in from 21 yards out. And Brown for the extra point to put Nebraska ahead. Like that. That's the sixth touchdown this year that that Nebraska defense has scored. They're used to it. 7-6. Here we go. Good rush right up outside there. See, good push inside. Good rush outside, but good tackle penetration by Jason Peter. He gets that right arm up, bats the football into the arms of Jay Foreman. No one out there covering from an offensive line standpoint. They're all in there battling pass protection-wise. Touchdown. Here comes Winstrom off the corner. Good hard outside rush. 
gets a push. That forces him back up inside. Bats the ball. Look at it wobbling there. Looks like a lame duck. But Foreman didn't care. He saw the end zone. They're having trouble blocking Peter. Remember, he made another big play that was negated because of that face mask penalty. And that time, they couldn't handle him either. He raised a hand, deflected it. And now Nebraska leads it. So here comes that point when it is very important for the Buffaloes to get a decent return on a kickoff. They're coming out of the closed end of Memorial Stadium. If the Huskers cover this well and bury Colorado back there, and last time, remember, they kicked it out of the end zone, then this crowd's going to make it tough for Detmer and the signal callers down there. Nunez and Stiggers are back, but the last time it didn't matter because Brown whacked it about eight yards deep. Jack Aroot. Brent, Nebraska relies on their defense. We see that evening up the score now. But consider this fact, 50 schools from around the nation came here to talk to Charlie McBride over the offseason, asking McBride what the key to the defense was. Listen to some of the schools. Ohio State, Tennessee, Virginia Tech, and tomorrow's big opponent for Florida, Florida State. They like what they see in Nebraska's defense. They like what they saw against Danny Werfel and the Gators in particular. And this one will not be returned. So Detmer and the Buffaloes trailing for the first time. Come out to the 20-yard line. Speaking of Danny Werfel, Florida and Florida State, Tallahassee. You just want to know the time of that one. You'll be there. 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Then Tiger Woods against John Daly. Freddie Couples, Tom Watson. That follows the football. And then, of course, tomorrow night we'll have prime time action from the Los Angeles Coliseum. Lou Holtz in Notre Dame against USC. And an embattled John Robinson. Detmer with a first down. His tight end is over to his left. They run to the strong oh. and Peter is just off to a monster. They he are just, not blocking 55. He just took Kyle Smith and stuffed him. Good control. He had both hands on him right there. You'll see what I'm talking about right in the middle of your screen here. Number 55. He's down a three-point stance. He butts straight up right in the left hand. Now he throws his moves back in there. Pads down. Helmet up. Pops him once. Fine defensive play. Fine, fine play. Look, he's a man, isn't he? <laughs> Peter is playing right next to Tomich. Jason urging the crowd on. And Minter comes up to that linebacking spot on the right side of the defense. Movement now by the left side of the offensive line. And this will be a penalty as number 75 moved for them that time, Dick. He did move, Brent. But now this time, another guy moved. They moved Jason Peter over to line up on Chris Nioli, the big All-American guard. That'll be a nice matchup. Those two guys There are two fouls off. on the play. Dead ball. Both start on the offense. Dead ball. Personal foul on the defense. Here's Tomich coming to the inside right there. Grabs him right there. Oh, he doesn't let him down. Look, he's trying to hold him up. A little friendly love tap there. And the Tommy's get an explanation. He's saying, I, I really was trying to hold him up on that. I didn't mean, but of course, the whistle had sounded. So when he made that contact, then they had to throw the penalty flag. Right. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. He didn't yeah, hear I, the whistle. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I clearly think that it was uh, accidental on his part, but... Colorado will take it. Thank you very much. But, Dick, the storyline that's clearly developing here is whether or not this Colorado offensive line can stand up against this defensive front. Well, they're still trying to run the ball. They cannot quit on running the ball. Yes, they're not running successfully that much, but that does constrict defensive people. It tightens those defensive ends, and they'll get the ball outside in the passes in. Now they spread them out. Now Peter... Moves over to the right defensive tackle, and there's movement again. Dead ball, both start, offense. You know, Nebraska is very, excuse me, Colorado is very, very close to breaking the school record for penalties. They came in with 88. They need 92, and they'll be the worst penalized team in the history of Colorado football. Here's number 75 right there, Aaron Wade. He's going to move a little early. You know, I might move a little early if I looked up and saw Grant Wistrom there, too. In fact, I'd go high. Denver changing up. And 
and Nebraska, like an NFL team, changes right up with him. And Minter now slips back out. Troutman is hit from behind. Wistrom was coming off that side, and they're not blocking Wistrom over there either. Remember what you told me the other day? You said you were watching tapes on Wistrom. He said, you know, you can't run at him, but when you're one away from him, he chases you from behind and makes a play. That's exactly what he did right then. Your backside blocking is critical. See, now, Andrew Wells, 74, if he's not assigned to him, see, he's blocking inside. That's too short a corner for Wistrom. He comes down real flat, makes the play excellent quickness. Second down and 15, and the black shirts are ready to go again. Jamel Williams is over on the right side. Here comes the blitz. Menner and Williams, oh. they're all over Denver. They bury him at the 18-yard line. Mike Minter, number 10, was up there as a linebacker from his strong safety position, which they planned to do because Farley's not there, and he leaped right up over the top of the blocker. What an athlete that young man is. Minter will appear on the right side of your screen. He looks like a long jumper coming up inside there. Here he gets back there. He's going to set five steps. He said, look at Minter up there. Wow, and then he gets help from Winstrom from the backside. He nails Detmer. They've got 45 sacks. At 44 coming into the game, and they're showing no sign of slowing up here. They only needed six to break the school record. Minter up on the left side. Huskers press again. Here comes Williams downfield. Detmer goes incomplete. Hefner is tied in, and there is a penalty flag. Before the snap, dead ball, delay of the game, offense. The closed end of the stadium. Things start to go badly here at Memorial Stadium, and suddenly it mushrooms. Jack Aroot. Brent, penalties have been a problem for Colorado all season, so much so that what Rick Neuheisel did early in the season, he started getting volunteers and referees from high school and surrounding areas to come in and actually work at every practice, trying to cure his team from committing so many penalties. What was the penalty for bringing a penalty in practice? Run the stairs in Boulder. You ought to use a baseball bat. Maybe it'll get their attention. The Husker defenders know about this closed end, and they have been urging the crowd to stay alive. The blitz, Jamel Williams chasing Detmer, got him on the release. It was Williams coming from the blind side. Yeah. Drew Welsh, number 74, the left tackle, cannot block Grant Wistrom by himself. They're going to have to help him. As they said, game plan, they would do this. From the left side of your screen, you'll see the flash. That'll be number 98. Chase him out of there. Here he comes. Gets him right there at the end. Can't get him down. That's why Williams is the leading tackler on this great defensive unit. He, too, was snubbed by the coaches when they selected their first team defense. There were more Colorado Buffalo players to that defensive unit than the Cornhuskers. And it has been the talk inside that locker room all week long. Under the pressure, and McFarland fields it at the 43, almost in slow motion when he made the catch. Good coach's decision, Brent. That time they had three deep safeties to field the punt because he, he's anticipating maybe in this weather a lousy punt right there to field it. Yeah, that has been a feature of the Cornhusker punt return team through the years, Dick. We saw it used to the Huskers' advantage back in Manhattan. Kansas. Right. It's good, good decision. Now Frost and the Huskers. Thanks to the great Nebraska defense, the Cornhuskers lead Colorado by a point, 7-6. Buffalo's kicked two early field goals. Option frog. Got it clean. Pitman spinning. It's wide open, but there's a penalty flag on the far side. And we see running backs slipping in the sloppy going here in Lincoln today. This is going to be against Colorado. He comes down the line of scrimmage. He waits for the immediate pressure, flips it with his right hand. And see, this has a high arc, this turf does. And he's going downhill when he gets there. He tries to get those cleats in the ground. He can't do it. Not in the ground, in the turf. Offside on the defense. Five yard penalty. Replay first down. So it's first and five. They're audibling to that option against specific fronts that time, in especially in the direction they want to go, Brent. When they see the end man outside the tight end, they take the ball to him and then pitch it up. Two wideouts 
added to the Nebraska attack. A tight end and a wide out lead. But they still show the tight end over here to the left, the fullback, and now there was movement against Jones. And that was Sheldon Jackson who was getting into it with Jones, the big tight end, busted across. A.J. Kristoff, both start offense. The defensive coordinator for Colorado had him back up there in the eight-man front. The last time they ran the option, they were in seven-man front. This time he's put eight people up there. Look for a play-action pass. They're at the Colorado 44-yard line, the Huskers are. And again, the shuttling of receiving personnel with the plays coming into Frost. The messenger brings it in. Brendan Holbein, the wideout, is off to Frost right. The fullback is Schuster. Eight guys He's up. in front of Benning. Option, it's Benning. Comes clean on black. He slips, dives forward to the 37-yard line. On a dry turf, he scores with that. On a dry turf, he's go with it. Real good job with it. Fake to the fullback initially. Then they send the fullback up to block the man trying to come to get to the pitch. You'll see what I'm talking about from the right side here. You watch the fullback as he fakes and then goes into the perimeter to get a block. Fakes, now follow him, there he goes. He's looking, look at bang, nice block, but the run, runner slips. Second down and four. The Buffaloes back off the wide receivers, and it is D'Angelo Evans, the freshman, his first carry, short of the first down. He'd reached the 35-yard line. And the whistle had sounded on this play after uh, several Buffaloes wanted the football after that, but the whistle had sounded and he was down. His forward progress was stopped. Here's big 70 Eric Anderson pulling around there trying to, but penetration got to him and he couldn't get a clean course all the way to get to his responsibility. Give credit to the defense. Yeah, Greg Jones doing a good job. It's third down. And about a yard, so 10 touchdowns for D'Angelo Evans. You know, he, he's a wide base runner. He can run on this kind of turf. Got a chance. Steps, spins, moves, and there's why the coaches love his future. You to the 28-yard line. You see how he runs? He skips, he keeps his feet apart, he can dance around, he's a patient runner, all, you know, which is amazing for a true freshman. But he'll come in here, follow him, ladies and gentlemen, as he moves to the line of scrimmage, number four, middle of your screen. His base will be wide, wide base, wide base, back up inside, working up field, first down. If that he, kind of guy can run on this kind of turf. If he reminds you of Barry Sanders, perhaps he should. He broke all of Sanders' rushing records. He's from Wichita, Kansas. They play fake to him, cross all kinds of time. Goes down to the end zone, incomplete. The other side of Federal, who had come off the left and turned back to the right. Tried to get down between those two safeties. Now Colorado committing those linebackers to stop the run. You run that make you pull the linebackers. But the two safeties were sitting back there, good discipline, just watching for something like that to happen. Second down and 10. And again, almost on every offensive play, Osborne and Nebraska substituting three players as the rain continues to fall. It has been raining since very early this morning here in Lincoln. Strong to the right, Schuster, the fullback with his first call behind the right guard, short of the 25-yard line. Terrell Cade, the defensive end in the game, making the stop for the Buffaloes on that play. I'm surprised they didn't audible out of that play because they really had all eight people up there defensively to stop that kind of a run. So we come down to the end of the first quarter. The Buffaloes kicked a couple of field goals, and then Nebraska answered with an intercepted pass by Foreman for the touchdown. The extra point putting them ahead. This the last play of the first quarter. They put it in a Holbein's hand, and he's to the 19-yard line. His first reception of the day, and the first of the option in this situation, the pitch man would be Brown. But on the other hand, he's also a very good field goal specialist. There comes the option. Federal keeps it. It's open all day long. Federal first down, Cornhuskers. The reason that's in the game plan, Brent, is Colorado rushes very hard to the outside and down very, very flat. Now, Federal, as you said, a gifted athlete. He comes up, makes it penetration inside because they knew that they'd come down there very, very, very flat. The head coach, Tom Osborne, has to make that call. 
no assist to make that call. Disheartening for the Buffaloes. And Federal did an outstanding job of indicating that he was going to put the ball down before he took off. They're not he was extremely up. patient on that fake. Schuster's the fullback, the freshman Evans. Crossed the option, a good runner. Keeps it, flips inside, and he's down at the two-yard line. See, what they did that time is the defense stretched to get to the outside, to get to the pitch. You'll see what I'm talking about. He'll come out of the fake, and the defense gets stretched, and he takes it back up inside. He's been taking it to the corner. See, now the hole opens. He gets up inside there, showing his athletic ability and his running skills to take it toward the goal line. They wanted to get to the perimeter to try to stop the pitch. He takes it inside. You can see how successful they have been, and aren't they every year? Muscle up front. Two tight ends. Power look in the backfield. The freshman to the right side, Evans. And he stopped at the two-yard line, cutting off his block, and Ryan Olsen. So we've got two 55s who are fine defensive tackles in this game. Olsen for Colorado and Peters over there on the other side. And these people play darn good defense down there. They really do. 71%. And the thing is, 16 touchdowns, just a little over 50%, that you want to keep touchdowns in that low 50% category. And that's what they're doing. A.J. Kristoff and staff doing a good job. They just don't want to let a great team like Nebraska get down here very often. So Federal is off to the right, and now he steps in motion. Cross, play fake, going to throw, and he's sacked at the 14-yard line. Matt Russell. The determined linebacker makes a huge play, and now Chris Brown will come in and surely kick it. A real good changeup call, call by A.J. Kristoff, because for a linebacker to sack a quarterback in a situation like this, he's got to be called to go. He doesn't automatically go. He's got to be called. That was a good changeup call. He wasn't picked up. He gets the sack. Big play. So Pedro will put this ball down on the 20. It'll be a 30-yard attempt. They won't get much of a rush this time. And it's good. See what that did? No rush at all. They said, hey, you got me one time. You're not going to get me the second time. <laughs> Browns field goal boosts Nebraska to a 10-6 lead. We'll be right back. somehow Colorado must find a way to block that defensive front first things first they look for the return here on the kickoff and they won't get one three times in a row Brown has buried them in the end zone and you can see the difference their first two scoring tries for 64 yards but again they did not put six points on the board either time now Rick Neuheisel has been unable to get downfield there's just not much time for Detmer to do that his offensive line especially against number 55, Peter, and Wistrom, number 98, for Nebraska. And they've also had lousy field positions starting those last two drives, too, Brent. Combine that with quarterback pressure, you're in trouble. So Welsh and Thomas will try to tackle. Troutman and Hess brings him down at the 29. Jack Aroot, it's not good footing in the wet going down there, is it, partner? No, Brent, it's a little wet, a little slippery, but here's what's surprising. On the Colorado side, they have the shoe boxes here, but it has not been cracked open. Nobody's changed shoes. On the Nebraska side, the running backs specifically have been coming off the field after each series and trying different types of shoes. Now, you would think with this being the home field that Nebraska would know what kind of shoes to wear. First half, time remaining. Nebraska with the lead. Carruth is slotted to the left. Detmer looks in that way. Comes down to the wide man, Anderson. Fumble! And Anderson goes back after the football. He had the first down. Ball came loose. And Anderson pounced on it. It is a first down, Colorado. You use the term after. Well, I think they're going after true freshman Ralph Brown as much as they can. One-on-one -on -one situation, 22 Brown, a true freshman. Anderson, a, a junior with more experience. You're going to try to get the big guy with more experience on the true freshman. But the true freshman steps up and makes the play. I believe they have called it uh, incomplete on that. And it is an incompleted pass. The official looking right at it 
that he never did have control when he coughed it up. So it is now third and two for the Buffaloes. So check that first down and McCarty along with Johannes Meyer checking in and you can see the defensive players bringing the Memorial Stadium crowd back into it. It is tough going for a road team in here. Troutman, first down. Good run by Troutman. He has that low center of gravity, and he dove for the first down. Combine the low center of gravity with a good base of, and attacking the line of scrimmage rather than going parallel, you can move the football on the slippery turf. And he's done that a number of times already. The, the play that's been really effective is the quick draw. They ran that within that series for about seven yards. They ran it earlier for about a 10-yard gain. They've got to come with those kind of plays. Let those tackles jump around and run opposite the direction of their jump. Peter is lined up opposite Smith this time. Troutman looks at that hole. They did a good job of blocking Peter, and it is a four-yard gain for the Buffaloes. Well, Rick Neuheisel told us, friends, that he was not going to get away from the fact that they came here to try to run the football, and even if it's three and four, but they're going to try to keep that within the entire game because they had confidence that their de defense could keep it close, and they'd get a big play somewhere in their passing game. Savoy brings the play in from Neuheisel's sideline. Some of that rain starting to turn to snow. The wind is picking up, too. Now Peter is matched against Nioli. They'll drop it off, and Troutman, well-conceived play. They had a strong rush from the left side, and they threw over the end head, and it's another Colorado first down. Good-looking play. Yeah, and you know, the man that made the play, John Hess, was blitzing as an inside linebacker, came off the block when he was picked up, and moved out into the perimeter and made the play, and the snow is coming down a little harder. Can't believe I'm here on this day. It's snowing in Barry Switzer and Oklahoma are nowhere in sight. <laughs> I don't get that. What happened here? I thought that'd go on forever. So the rain is freezing. We've got sleep falling in Lincoln. It's a first down. Detmer on a play fake. Whitstrom was coming, throws long. Carruth intercepted. Drop. That was Brown, and he should have had it off the deflection in and out of his hands. That was not a good decision for Coy to try to throw the football. Play action. They went into a zone down there, so he had help back to the inside. He should be able to read that. That's one disadvantage of play action passing because you can't always see what's happening as you make your play fake. Brown almost comes up with it. He looks like he's going to put it away, and it slips out of his hands. Boy, you don't want to lose that guy. Shake it up. The big play wide receiver comes over to the Colorado sideline. Of course, he's out of Sacramento where he was a fine high school running back. Set all kinds of records that a defensive back at Colorado by the name of Wheeler has now broken. Second down and 10. They pull Nioli. Troutman behind the guard with a hole, and he runs to the 46-yard line. So Nioli lined up against Peter on the pull that time. He leads the way for Troutman. Big Wistrom out there was in on the play because he's the defensive end, and he constricts it. He moves back down to the inside, tight ends it, and he holds his ground, see, and pushes it back up inside. And big Melvin Thomas at 320 pounds comes up inside the hole. They make four or five yards. Not a bad play. So it is now third and six for the Buffaloes. Pressure Wait. front. Here comes Minner on the blitz. Deflected. And Colorado is forced to punt as Mike Minter, who has replaced Forley at that outside linebacker spot, does the job again. That's the second time that he has done that, Brent. Good change-up call by Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator, to bring him in almost the exact situation, different formation, but he gets good penetration. He leaps and he bats it down, playing outside linebacker for the first time in his career. Top of your screen, number 10, Minter, good leap. See, he likes to leap up over the top of those running backs blocking him. And a new punter. Andy Mitchell will try it this time. They can rotate Peach. Got a little sleep to his back. <laughs> From the 12-yard line, it opens for Fullman. And 
Coleman slips. He is down at the 22 yard line. And that's where Nebraska will put it in play, leading 10 6 in the sleep in Lincoln. We'll be right. Sprain on the outside of his left ankle. And what the trainers have done is they've re wrapped that ankle, but also added an ace bandage underneath the tape. They've re taped it. He'll be going back in the next series. Well, Jack, we want to pass along a very happy Thanksgiving to everyone who is watching this game. And uh, certainly we always enjoy coming to Lincoln. Dick, let me ask you about a big favorite like the Cornhuskers in raw, tough weather. What does that do for an underdog like Colorado in this situation? Well, there's not going to be a lot of scoring by either team, so it keeps it closer. But the disadvantage, but Colorado likes to score in the big play, and that'll be a little bit tougher for them. Nebraska with the lead and the football. And it is the freshman, in case you're wondering about his workload, the Nebraska sideline has set up the word that Amon Green is suffering from another foot injury. X-rays are negative, but they're saying that this time it was not the turf toe, but he injured a, a bone in the foot during practice earlier this week. It then healed. He thought he was fine, but he's come up gimpy. So therefore, we're seeing a lot of D'Angelo Evans and he's in there now. He's the pitch man, but Frost will keep it an outstanding runner. And Frost just wheels out to the 45 for a first down. See, that's what they have to do against that eight-man front. They have to get outside. You'll see right here, there's four here, there's four here. So it's hard to run in here. So they want to fake and get the ball outside. They get a nice crack block up on top. I'm sure you understand everything I said, huh, ladies and gentlemen. Pow, there's a crack. He gets up inside there. The fullback's leading out in front. Good running skills by the quarterback. First down. Well, Scott's father, Larry, played halfback here for the Huskers back in the 60s. He was at practice yesterday watching his son get ready, and his mother, Carol, threw the discus for the United States Olympic team in 1968 down in Mexico City, and then Carol coached the women's track team here at Nebraska from 1977 through 80. So the young man, Scott Frost, comes from an athletic family and meanwhile the Buffaloes and remember their bench is very close to the sidelines here and they have pulled it out onto the field away from everybody it's a very tight intimate setting here and when the coach has something private that he wants to say to the troops they just kind of like bring him on out to the field I remember Hubie Brown in his days when he coached before he became a broadcaster. He would say, yeah, you can come put a microphone in my huddle until I pull the team out on the floor, then stay away from those microphones because <laughs> the folks might hear something that they shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, Rick Neuheisel's done an awfully good job of preparing his team mentally all week with an approach, like you said, come in and play with confidence and poise. Dick, here is the Big 12 All-Conference team I've been talking about. There you can see the four players from Nebraska and six from Colorado. Now, one suggestion is the fact that and we don't really know the answer, but someone down in Baylor would have it. They're not sure that the coaching staff down in Baylor, which is undergoing a change down there, filed a vote. That was uh, somewhat of a uh, question up here, but at any rate, the Cornhuskers feel a little bit snubbed in that area. Regardless, here comes Evans and the freshman Powers to the 48 on first down. He's just such a patient-looking running back. There are a host of outstanding young running backs. You've got Irvin at Michigan State, Enos at Penn State, Evans here at Nebraska. You go all around the country. Well, any time as a, a high school senior, you can average 207 yards a game. You can step on a college field behind an offensive line like Nebraska and run the ball efficiently. Problem which we apologize for, and uh, we will get it fixed here as quickly as we can. Normally, they run that counter outside. Coming into this ball game, they want to run it both inside and outside. They want to run it inside to constrict the good defensive ends like Greg Jones and, and Nick Ziegler to get him down in there tighter so they can then get outside with the counter and later in the ball game. Third down and a long two. And on the option, it is Evans, 40-35. First and goal after the 40-yard run. 
Well, they went with quick pressure in the quarterback's face. Brian Black comes right down the line of scrimmage from the left side of your, no, the right side of your, no, we'll see. Right, left side of your screen, you'll see the pressure areas. Take the quarterback right now, but they don't get contained position on him. They get the other man blocked. Up inside that thing he goes, good speed, almost to the end zone. They made the decision coming in. Short yard as you go line there. We're going to take the quarterback right now. And they did it. Evans stays in. Makovica, the fullback. Two tight ends. And Frost will try Makovica. But the defense was ready for that ploy. And Cade, number 48, makes the stop. Boy, I tell you, Ryan Olsen carries a load inside there. They tried to trap inside there. When they blocked back on him, he just stuffed it back in there, and the guard couldn't pull around in good position to make his trap block. Boy, what a force inside. Mau Mau is not on the field defensively for Colorado. Marshall has replaced him on this series. Second down, and Frost changes up at the line of scrimmage. Cheatham is his wide receiver to the right. Evans on a delay, has a crease. Evans, touchdown, Nebraska. The young man with a great future. Here's Brown for the extra point. Already 70 yards and an 8.8 yard average in the early going. Nebraska up to lead. Remember, if you just joined us, Colorado jumped out to a six point lead, but then the Huskers woke up. And now it is 17 6 with the freshman Evans into the end zone. The engineers. The Nebraska offense puts its first touchdown on the board. The defense scored earlier on an interception. There's the average drive this year for the Cornhuskers. Take a look at this one, Coach, huh? <laughs> one play a little bit beyond their average. That's right. <laughs> What's wrong with this bunch? I don't know. we got to <laughs> talk to Frank Solich, the offensive coordinator. <laughs> Nunez and Stiggers. And this is Nunez. 25. Weaves his way out to the 29, but there's a penalty flag thrown on the far side. showed a little bit of a flash. He's a true freshman. We saw earlier in the year, and they said he was improving, and they thought by next year he'd be an extra Holding on the return. Ten-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. First down. It is amazing how after the interception, Coach, things turned around for the Huskers. Well, this counter gap play was run real. They get a good seal off inside. They pull Hoskins to come over here, kick out Anderson around the corner, and there they go. Into the end zone. Bang. Nice kick out right there. Good running skills. Get in the end zone. Now it's first down for Detmer. Colorado in a catch-up mode. And they stick with the run. Troutman out to the 20-yard line. That is an important consideration. Because in talking to coaches around the Big 12 that take on Nebraska, a lot of teams get away from the run too early. And then the waterfall comes crashing down on them. You can't give it up completely. No, you can't. But Colorado's been in bad field position this whole first half. After that drive, Brent, they're always down inside this 20-yard line. Tough to really open up. Second down and seven. There's a slot formation to the left. Four wide receivers. And they run. Troutman. And Troutman to the 23-yard line. So this will be about a third and four with John Hess that middle linebacker making the stop. Nioli, big, strong guy, number 65, middle of your screen. He's on Jason Peter. He's going to take him back to the inside. They just want to run off his charge. The running back 
reads the Ellis block and runs opposite the charge of Jason Peter. That's a good change up. It's been successful today. I'd run the opposite him too. Now Mentor switches over to the weak side of the formation if they're going to blitz on this play. And it's complete to the tight end. And a color fumble. He's Looks down. ball, but he's down. That is a first down for Colorado as they put the ball in Hefner's hands. Well, Hefner is the receiving tight end. He's the big guy at 6'5". He comes off inside, and they pop it to him quickly. That's what's important to do against Nebraska. You see from the right side of your screen, he gets right up inside here quickly. Linebacker is lined up outside him. They see that right now. Here it comes, and the middle linebacker just can't get over there quick enough to make the play. 22 yards for a conversion on a third down. And Colorado, I thought when I saw it that it clearly was a fumble. But at any rate, here's Troutman. And that's a two-yard gain. It'll be second and eight. And Big Thomas, the offensive tackle, gets in it downfield with Jamel Williams, the linebacker. But uh, quickly, they disengage. See, what's happening now with a couple first downs back-to-back, -back, they're moving the ball out into a field position area where they can open up the attack a little bit. And I'm sure that Carl Durrell, the offensive coordinator, is thinking that right now. And, oh, Wistrom, he folds back inside. He just finds the ball carrier wherever he's going. So it is second and eight. With the two tight ends, they can at least help the tackle thrown in pass protection. Play fake, Detmer under pressure, fires high and incomplete. James Kidd was the wide receiver, and Detmer goes down on the release. That was Jamel Williams, the fine senior outside linebacker that pressured him. You know, everyone talks about sacks all the time, Brent, and they are important. But the advantage to pressure, you can intercept the ball thrown poorly under pressure. Here comes Williams, 28, gifted athlete, just keeps right on coming. Not a big guy at 200 five pounds really a strong safety skilled type athlete playing outside linebacker an advantage against this kind of an attack third down and eight Detmer looking for a play Nioli is lined up against Peter switches he's got McCarty but it's short of the tight end and the stop was made by Eric Warfield the free safety and that was a mismatch physically but good tackling fundamental technique he comes up and really pops him but a big tight end at 260 pounds many times will run over that smaller safety if the safety doesn't tackle fundamentally correctly and Nebraska kids really tackle well good and, athletes normally do and with that tackle Colorado forced the punt Mitchell on the field to punt. Andy Mitchell with his second punt. Fullman back deep, standing at the 10 yard line. He's very dangerous. He had a 62 yard touchdown run this year, a 72 last year. Not going to return this one very far. Going to let it go. Going to take a Colorado bounce, and it'll be down around the 17 yard line. Well, that huge one coming up in Tallahassee tomorrow. And uh, to find out what we got cooking from there at halftime, let's go now to John Saunders. John, how's the weather down there? Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96 from Dope Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee, Florida, where tomorrow it's number one against number two. Yeah, a classic battle of strength versus strength. Florida, the number one ranked offense in the country. Florida State, number one defense. All right, coming up, we'll hear from Keith Jackson, Bobby Bob, plus a look at the rivalry between Florida and Florida State. Yeah, thanks, John. Look at him sitting on the field. You know, nice, warm, sunshiny day down there, Coach. I can remember when back Blackledge used to be tough. <laughs> Here's the pitch now to Evans on the option look. And Evans is hit at the 21-yard line by Ron Merkerson, the junior linebacker. You know, Ron Brown, the receiver coach here does a, at Nebraska, does a great job of teaching receivers to block. These guys have to block as well as catch footballs. And sometimes I think it's even more important that they block well. That time, the outside wide receiver came down and got a crack block on the defender outside. Good block, good fundamental techniques. And Tom Osborne, as you see on that screen, insists on fundamental technique. Eight people up. Frost on second down, hands to Evans, and Evans is switching the line of scrimmage that time. 
Boy, I'll tell you, there was a real collision on that line of scrimmage that time. A real collision between a good blocking fullback and a linebacker. Matt Russell is a big, strong guy. He likes to take people on. That's why he's an All-American. That's why he's still in the, the hunt for the, the Butkus Award. Well, we've got a timeout, so we'll take a break and come right back to Lincoln. 219 left in the first half. Well, if you can't wait for that one to start at noon Eastern, the uh, folks from game day at ESPN will be on the air at 11 a.m. with a good look at the Florida-Florida State game. Great matchup. Danny Werfel at the controls, favored to win the Heisman Trophy, goes into Tallahassee to see what he can do against that Seminole defense. Great speed on that attack. Rorick Dunn, perhaps underrated this year. Very efficient. And uh, the Chief says, bring it on. Let's find the hole in the and two tomorrow here on ABC third down and six yards to go Colorado's defending in to run the football Frost is audible and he pitches to Evans 25 and down at the 28 yard line so it's hot which would give them a first down where Evans was pushed out of bounds on the near side at the Colorado bench. That was Merkerson there. See, the whole theory of running an option, Brent, is try to get the ball in the perimeter and have more offensive players outside than they have defenders. They almost had it that way for a big one. Tom Osborne giving the play to Jeff Lake, who dashes onto the field with it for Frost, the quarterback, and a fresh set of downs from the 29-yard line. Nebraska, 17, Colorado, 6. Inside of two minutes remaining in the first half in Lincoln. And Frost again changing up after looking at that defensive front. And uh, timeout is called as he looked down at the clock was running out. And Frost forced to take a timeout here, leaving Nebraska with two. You know, Frost isn't going to make many mental mistakes at that position, Brent. He has a 3.7 GPA in business. You know, he went to Stanford University originally and then transferred back here, back to his home state. Not going to make many mental mistakes. Well, let's take a break and check in on some upcoming programming coming at you from ABC. That efficient Nebraska running game that you talked about at the top of the broadcast. Yeah, they finally got it going. They were struggling there for a little while. A little while ago, I had them checked on it. They had 54 yards. Now they've got it going. But still, I think that Colorado has got to be pleased with their overall defense against the final offensive team like this. They just got to get something big in their, in their uh, passing attack. Well, one of the reasons why they got it going was D'Angelo Evans. You, you love that guy, don't you? You're going to make him a Heisman Trophy when they're his sophomore year. You are. Yeah. Uh, well, now that Ron Collis is moving on, i got to have somebody. Well, you get your turn to pump him tomorrow night. <laughs> 11 carries, 81 yards, and one touchdown for D'Angelo. Fake by Frost, stands tall, time wobbler, and he hits his tight end for Sean Jackson. You know, they used a drastic shift. When a team uses a drastic shift from an offensive standpoint, personnel-wise, usually you're trying to confuse people. You see what I'm talking about? All these people up here on top shifted over. Now that you hope to create a mistake in the defensive standpoint, they come with a strong play action fake. They actually, number one, want to throw it back. It wasn't there. They throw it onside. The handoff from the shotgun is to Evans. And he gives Nebraska a first down at the 41-yard line. The Cornhuskers with a 17-6 lead and 109 remaining here in the first half. And Tom Osborne certainly just wants to keep that clock moving right now. Doesn't want anything of a high-risk nature down here to give Colorado an opportunity to score a touchdown or kick a field goal. The shotgun look. And Frost going to go with another wobbly pass. He has not thrown the ball well in these conditions and that stops the clock with 57 seconds and makes it second down and 10. You know it's not automatic that they will throw the ball from that shotgun. They run the option, they run the draw, they run the quarterback draw, they run the direct snap to the, to the running back in the backfield. Now with 57 seconds they may not do that Brent but they have a lot of little gimmicks within that shotgun formation. Now here's four wide receivers. And Frost shuffle. And inside shuffle. Evans to the 49-yard line. And again, he's right at the first down marker, Nick Siegler. They got the full package. 
And it's Florida, Florida State tomorrow. Followed by the skins competition. And then tomorrow night it'll be Notre Dame at USC. So third down and one. 30 seconds to go. Evans, a first down. Continuing to power ahead. Nakavika, the fullback, one of the blockers over there. The clock is stopped in the college game after a first down. And that will allow the Corn Huskers to take a crack at it if they wish here in the last 24 seconds, leading it 17 to 6. You know, Matt Russell has really been a thorn in Nebraska's running game inside there. He's done an excellent job of stuffing the stuff right at him. And he did it that time and made it bounce over there. They still got the first down, but it wasn't his ball. Now let's see if they can give Chris Brown a last second shot. He kind of went the wrong way with pushes it. the ball, and it is incomplete. He went the wrong way, Brent. Federal crossing underneath was wide open if they'd have thrown it to him. I bet you he goes back and tells him he was wide open. If they throwed it to him, he'd have been able to turn up the sideline for at least 20 yards. You know, it's interesting to watching Frost. He shot puts the ball, and in high school, he was an outstanding shot putter. As a matter of fact, he defeated big Eric Anderson for the uh, shot put title. Scott Frost was out of Wood River High School. Watch, watch the motion. It's just a boom. Pops it right out there. Yeah. 58 foot shot putter. There's the direct snap. Evans to the 40 yard line. Have to use a timeout now. And a timeout is taken at the 11 second mark. There's no use taking two on into the locker room. And just one little completed pass here and a quick timeout. And they can give Chris Brown a shot at a long field goal. That is certainly not out of the question right now as Brown gets ready. And then coming up at halftime. We'll take you live down to Tallahassee, the sunshine of Tallahassee, where the Gators are getting ready for the Knowles. And again, like this game, the loser figures to be out of the national championship picture come tomorrow. So these are the most important games. And now let's go down to Jack Aroo. Jack? At Monday's press conference in Colorado, Rick Neuheisel didn't talk about the Nebraska game. He made a statement original, initially. He said, I am not going anywhere. I am not interested in going anywhere. It seems what's happened is there's been a lot of rumors. One that surfaced early in the week was the fact that he was under consideration for the Alabama game. Just yesterday, a noted broadcaster said he's on his way to Detroit in the NFL. When you talk to Neuheisel, when I talk to him, he said, I'm not going anywhere, but it's awfully complimentary to be considered about those games. But one thing to remember, Brent, state law in Colorado says you can only have a one-year contract. So who knows what lies in the future? What that means is those rumors have come up every year. I'll tell you this. I talked to Rick Neuheisel's wife, Susan, yesterday. She says if any one of those rumors is true, he's going alone. Time out, <laughs> Colorado. Chances That's are he won't go. Line, line <laughs> yeah, I, I would say that eventually if Rick Neuheisel goes anywhere, it's going to be west, okay? And eh, just keep an eye on those west coasts. Not only the NFL, but the college teams. He's a, he's a Southern California lad, but he likes it in Colorado, and uh, he's done a good job with that program so far. He needs to win a big game. He'd certainly like to be closer here today. Well, you know, all he's going to do is get better, Brent. I mean, he's just a kid. Here he is, the third youngest coach in college football. Three years down the road, there won't be any Bob in the country probably doing it any better. Look, walk on to the Rose Bowl MVP. USFL shot to the NFL a couple of years. Law school, graduate assistant to head coach. Assistant coach to Colorado to head coach. What a fast, rapid pace to grow in a, in a tough profession. Oh, he's got that law degree. He can negotiate his own millions. <laughs> oh. Oh, yes. I now, thought that was you when I looked down yeah, there, Brent. I, I needed that for my head this morning. Thank you very much, Coach. <laughs> Third down. And Frost going to throw it again with that quick complete. There it is. Got to get down and get the timeout called. Got it called. Three seconds to go. That's all they needed. And here comes Chris Brown. See, they were in an eight-man front, still defensing the run. We get one-on-one -on -one situation out here, right here with Holbein on Young Wiener, a true freshman. It's a deep comeback route there. Good timing, good play action. All you have to do is throw that accurately, and you'll get it. That's a one-on-one -on -one situation all the way. This guy has not been real effective outside the 40. He's two for four outside 40 yards. 
He has an off but strong leg, though. When you watch him kick the ball in practice, it gets up quickly. Plus, he's a gifted, gifted athlete, this guy. They say he's good enough athlete to be a backup quarterback here. 41-yard field goal attempt. Look at that ball. No good. Missed this one. It looked good, just didn't go straight enough. So the hard work by Osborne's offense comes up a little empty. He has not been as accurate outside the 40-yard line, Brent, which no field goal kicker is, but his leg is awfully strong. He's a 55-yard field goal potential guy. He's just got to become more accurate. So we have reached halftime here. It is 17-6 in Lincoln, and we will send you from the cold and the sleet down to sunny Tallahassee. John Saunders, take it away. Green forced out with a foot injury, but D'Angelo Evans, the freshman running back, picks it up, and Dick Vermeil can Colorado stick in this game. I think they can if they stay with the same approach, hope for better field position. I think this is a big series right now. If they can come out and play real good defense, that defensive team has only given up 10 points so far. Field in a yard deep. Should have stayed, stayed in there. Should have stayed in there. And he does get it back to the 20-yard line. Jack Aru, what the coaches have to say. Rick Neuheisel went into the locker room and he had a very inspirational speech. It all revolved back. He told the story of 1990 right here in Lincoln when the Colorado Buffaloes came in and at halftime he pointed out they were down by 12 points. They came back and scored four two touchdowns in the second half. He told his boys, you can do it again this time. Colorado players on defense, Jack, to start the second half. They played well on defense overall. Russell, number 16, at that linebacking spot in particular, has been a force. And the fullback, Schuster, runs to the left side of the offensive line, and they were able to take care of Russell that time. See, that's something they did not do in the first half. They did not hand that direct handoff to the fullback and establish it in there. That'll help slow down that inside-out pursuit on the option. There are the leaders, Roska, the safety, forced to make seven tackles. So this running game of the Huskers getting into that secondary. Second down and short, a double tight end formation. D'Angelo Evans on the toss. Runs patiently for a first down and out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Nobody does any better job of getting a body on a defender than Nebraska. They get the red jersey on the white jersey. They don't always get them knocked down, but they get everybody accounted for. That time, it was critical by the running back and wide receiver. The lead backer, number 28, Brian Schuster out there. See a body on a body. He knows that's not his man. He goes after his guy and gets there a step late. That gives Evans 100 yards rushing for the day. Boy, you're 15. excited, aren't you, Musberger? Huh? You touchdown. love this guy. <laughs> First and 10, D'Angelo lined up as the eye back. They switch the tight end over to the left. And they come right back with Schuster. Huge hole for the fullback. Robson's in a foot race, and Schuster outruns him to the 45-yard line. Well, the big change that the assistant coaches made on the offensive side was to convince the head coach, Osborne, that the fullback was there all day, and he made a good run. And it was real good blocking scheme that time. They down-blocked the tight end, and they pulled the left guard, Dishman. They pulled him out. You'll see him right here. Pull and kick out as everyone else seals inside. See, bang, he'll pull. There he goes. He kicks out right there. There goes the hole, and now it's the fullback carrying the ball. Whistle along with a penalty flag. There was still time showing. You know, the Nebraska offensive line. Their ball, both start, offense. Nebraska offensive linemen are big enough to whip you physically one-on-one -on -one and straight ahead, but yet they use a lot of scheme blocking like they did that time. Now they have Dishman at 6'3", 310, pulling and blocking an outside linebacker. They, they, they change up, they move around, they trap you, they kick you out. You really have to defense everything across the board when you line up on that front seven. First down and 15. Frost keeps it on the quarterback keeper. And he crashes to the 42-yard line. Well, he demonstrates his athletic ability there. They wanted to run the draw up inside. It was plugged up by the defensive tackles. 
flexible enough, quick enough to go ahead and bounce it to the outside of his offensive guard and tackle and take it up there for the nice game. Jeff Lake brings the play in from Osborne's sidelines. Lance Brown, the wide receiver, will go off to Frost left. Second down and seven for the Huskers. Evans, the lone running back in this formation, at slot left and three wideouts. Fires complete. Puts it in fumble. Colorado's got it. That's the big play, man. Steve Rosga comes up, and I don't believe the ball ever hit the ground. We'll have to see, but I think it was an interception rather than a fumble recovery. I agree with you, Brent. That's how I saw it from up here. They were going to run a little delay right there, just stop inside that slot formation. They threw it to him, but he bent down low, and he picked it up, and he didn't get it tucked away properly, and Rosga picked it up as it bounced out of there. That is the second turnover of the game for the Cornhuskers. Middle of your screen. Here he comes, number 14. That Lance Brown, so he gets it tucked away. Now he's got the ball out from his body right there, and he took it right off the turf, as you called it. Now they Troutman in. And a big moment for the Buffaloes. Troutman, nothing doing, and there was Jason Peter, the defensive tackle from New Jersey, making the big stop. Christian Peter, his brother, was a member of this team a year ago and wound up, I think, very unfortunately for him, being a lot more controversial than he wanted to be. His brother has signed a contract with the New York Giants, apparently, and let's hope that things straighten out for Christian. He's a fine football player, gets a chance, and if the Giants didn't sign him, what we learned here this week is that the Miami Dolphins were going to. Jimmy Johnson was going to give him a chance. Now it is Coy Detmer bringing motion on second and ten, and he fires the kid. A play we did not see, and he's out to the 43-yard line. This will give Colorado third and short. You know, in the first half, after the turnover, they only got three points out of it, Brent. Right now, you get a turnover, even in this field position, to win a football game against a great defensive team, against a good college football team like Nebraska, you've got to turn it into seven points once in a while. Nebraska does a good job following a giveaway. And I'll tell you, they make you run a lot of plays to score. The average college team scores about every 26 plays. You see 59 plays is a lot of snaps. All right, it's third and three. Detmer's short drop too low. He wanted Hefner. The pass was low. I'm not sure that the ball was catchable. Hefner and the Buffaloes are screaming about interference. It was not a well-thrown ball. Warfield, the defender. Now, they used that twice in the first half, but to me, it looked like pass interference. Bang! He's oh, he, definitely. That's pass interference. Yeah. It, it's pass interference all the way. No excuse for not calling that. It's too obvious. But regardless, yeah. forced the punt. Yeah. And they will go on as Mitchell continues to be the Buffalo punter and the three deep men. So right now, there's two turnovers and only three points out of it. And penalty flag comes down on the fake. That is a very dangerous Nipple, spot. Both start offense. And they will punt this time. Yeah. Well, and that was a risky call, but if you're going to run a fake punt, you better run it where they don't expect it because you cross the 50. A good defensive team many times will leave the entire defense on the, and play with a defensive call. It's a gutsy call. He needed a change of pace. He had what he wanted. I think he'd have made the first down. A direct snap. He's going up inside there. I think he'd have made the first down. That was Black who took the direct snap. And now on fourth and eight, that changes the odds completely in this situation. It is fielded by Fullman. Got to play. 35. Cuts back at the 40. Penalty flag thrown. Fullman to the 44-yard line and a penalty. So we'll pick up the infraction. And then we'll take a break here in Lincoln on the illegal block. So it'll be against the return, and that'll set the Huskers back. We have 10.41 to go in the third quarter. The Huskers survive a uh, turnaround, a turnover, I should say, and force Colorado to put it back. Illegal block to the back on the return. 
10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. So we'll come right back to Lincoln with the Cornhuskers leading 17 to 6. Lou Holtz leads the Fighting Irish in his final regular season game as coach. They go to war with the Trojans of USC in a primetime showdown Saturday night on ABC Sports. First half possessions plus one here in the second half, and they are not dominating this game offensively, Dick. You've got to give credit to A.J. Kristoff and their approach. They're playing the eight-man front, and they use a spread formation. They still keep two linebackers inside, daring them to throw the ball. They're forcing them to throw, and they aren't throwing. That's, but they're leading. That's the important thing for Nebraska. Shoots to the fullback, set in front of Evans, the eye back, and for Sean Jackson. And the substitution. Well, the substitution is and public will tell players five yard penalty. <laughs> On almost every play, the Cornhuskers substitute a package of three players. It's usually a tight end and two wideouts. So it looked like he was leaving. They had too many on the field. Got him in the infraction, and it's uh, first and 15. Now for Sean Jackson. Flexes over to the left-hand side of the tight end. Big fella, good receiver. But clearly this Nebraska team not polished. End around fake. Evans keeps it. Stretch Russell is right there. Russell didn't bite on the fake, and he rode the eye back down. He has played well all day in there. Runs right at him. Now there's a run all the way out. And they use that fake reverse. If you're in man-to-man, -man, that pulls the corner, chasing that guy coming back in the face. That reverse, and it softens that corner. Now here he comes, 29 right there. That's Shevin Wiggins. He fakes it, hoping to pull the corner out of there so they don't have anybody to block. They weren't in a man-to-man -man defense that time. And here comes Russell. He doesn't care what defense it is. He just knows where the ball is. So it is second and long and a shotgun look, which again is not a pure passing formation, but this time it will down, wobbling down the middle and double coverage at midfield. That one falls incomplete. Marcus Washington, along with Damon Wheeler. Now Damon, that young man number two, is out of Sacramento. There's Washington who teamed with him. The other young man right there, Wheeler, has a brilliant future in front of him. One of the things the Colorado coaches will try him at next spring will be as one of their kickoff return men. It is now third and 14. Wheeler picked off a big pass last week in Boulder in the snow against K-State. Third down for the Huskers. Frost, under pressure, wanted to set the screen through low to Schuster, and Nebraska will punt it away. And Colorado has to take heart about how things have started here in the third quarter. A turnover, and now forced the punt on a fourth and 14. And Nebraska hasn't had people force him to three plays and out very many times this year, Brent. Now what Colorado is looking for is a big play on their special teams. Something to give them the lift. Nunez back deep, and here is Cush. Jesse Cush, 48-yarder in the first half. The meteorology major, Nunez, setting out a return to see if he can give him a lift. Bad snap. And the rush good was punt. not on. They were going to set a return. Fair catch, though, on a good punt by Cush at the 35-yard line. Good punt and good poise. Bad snap, hits the turf. How many times have we seen a punter swallow the olive as soon as he sees that bad snap? We've got a lot of olives go down. Coach, <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road, and Marriott Hotels, Resorts, and Suites. We believe when you're comfortable, you can do anything. Hope you're nice and warm and comfortable. We've had some heavy rain sweep across Lincoln, but that has not stopped the faithful. 214 consecutive sellouts and a great defense. They'll go to work against Coy Detmer. Detmer to throw on first. Wistrom is blocked, and Detmer steps away from trouble and for the first time scrambles and turns it upfield. A brilliant decision by the quarterback who, instead of going out of bounds, took it downfield for another seven yards before he steps out at the 46. 
Grant Richardson comes around to the outside and pushes him back up inside. Now the guards are doing a good job. Nioli does a good job, creates that hole up inside. Now he shows a little more running ability than I thought he had. Good blocking by the wide receivers. He goes tight, tight roping down that goal sideline. 18 yard gain for Detmer who underwent knee surgery last season and has returned. He wears that brace on his left knee but he sprinted out of trouble. Gave the Buffaloes a big lift. Going to throw again on first down. Incomplete. Was going to throw the slant over here and that was the number 80 Phil Savoy. Wistrom is unbelievable coach. Not only does he have a speed rush to the outside but he's got a bull rush and he was just collapsing the pocket in on Detmer on that throw. Well Charlie McBride the defensive coordinator told both you and I that that his second move is to get into you make him believe that it's going to go all the way outside you then redirect his power and just take the tackle to the quarterback. It's good observation Brent because he has that ability at 6'5 255 a lot of strength in that young man. Second down and 10. Wistrom is the right defensive end if you want to watch him. The Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. He lines up at an angle. I thought the defense was offside. Troutman, nothing doing. I thought the man outside. Here comes the penalty flag down. I thought the Nebraska linebacker stepped up into that neutral zone and was offside. You know, it, that was the penalty. Dick, you know, there's somebody I want to say something about. I don't know if he's watching the game or watching on television. But I really hope the young man, Outside, Terrell Farley. Five yard penalty. Terrell Three Farley is not here, down. and he has a problem with alcohol. There's, there's absolutely no question. He went through rehab for Coach Osborne once. Been suspended from the year after that uh, pending charge of uh, driving under the influence. I hope he gets treatment, cures his problem, and goes on to a career. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, He's a fine football player, and let's just hope he corrects the problem and goes from there. Second down now. Detmer on a short drop. Pressure complete. Goes to the tight end. The middle was open, and they got it past the free safety Warfield to the 21-yard line, and the Buffaloes are in business. They're moving the ball well, and they're doing the intelligence things, not high risk throwing. Now, they've got to, in Nebraska standpoint, cannot allow the tight end to come off clean down the middle of that defense when they're going to play that double coverage deep zone like that. They've got to chuck him and don't let him off clean. So the ball is at the Nebraska 27-yard line. A double tight end with Troutman, a counter step. Troutman looking for a hole and Troutman to the 21-yard line off that quick counter step and then cuts back to the left. See what they do with that counter step is freeze the middle linebacker just one step then they pull the guard and tackle from the backside and kick out there and try to create that cushion they got six or seven yards out of that good change up hard to get outside those defensive ends better to run up inside them now wade the tackle is replaced by welsh clearly welsh is not hundred percent they haven't been giving him every snap double tight end again they offset Troutman now to the right Detmer throws over Peter in zone. Anderson incomplete at the goal line. And that was the freshman Brown defending him there. And Anderson, the big fella, had a crack at it. See, they tried to get the six foot four, 220 pound wide receiver on the shorty, five foot 11 guy. True freshman, they're going after him. They get the ball thrown up high. He has a chance to make the play, and he should make that play. If they're going to win the football game, your wide receivers have to make this kind of play. The ball's thrown where it ought to be. That's good defense, too. But the big man was up there. Should have come down with it. Now with the rain, rain guys. Yeah. coming down here in Lincoln. Third down and four for the Buffaloes. The ball at the 22-yard line. Blitz, here over the blitzer, and Kid can't hold on to the ball. It's incomplete. It'll be fourth down. And now we will await New Heisel's decision. He will send the field goal unit onto the field. Two field goals representing all the points. And here comes Aldridge, who has kicked both of them. Jeremy takes over the field goal kicking chores from Jason Leslie today, 45 and 40 yards away. The fact that they've already tried a fake punt, I would recommend the defense play just a standard defense and don't go blindly rushing this guy. You might want to recommend, though, that they kick the field goal. <laughs> Gets it up. 
He's three for three. Three for three. Not bad for a rookie. <laughs> 17 to nine. And the one thing Nebraska fans have to remember, Colorado has been able to hang in this game. ABC is the place to be tomorrow, and there are three great reasons why. Florida, Florida State, can't get any better than that one. One versus two, then the Skins game. Watch and see how Tiger Woods, the young phenom, does. And then tomorrow night, Notre Dame and Lou Holtz. Lou's never lost to USC. Nebraska sends Wiggins and Cheatham back deep to return this Leslie kickoff. It is 17-9. Huskers with the lead. Cheatham, number six, is there to the left. He's a wide receiver. And Wiggins over to the right-hand side of him is a young man out of Florida. And he looks like he's going to get a crack from the 10. 15, 20. Strong return out to the 28-yard line. Colorado, 42 plays apiece, domination in terms of total yards. Nebraska, about 60 there more. Time of possession, favor Colorado. They are hanging in tough. Defense has been solid. Forced a couple of turnovers already in this game. D'Angelo Evans has replaced the injured Amon Green at that eye back spot. Two wide receivers. Solid eight-man front. Evans to run against it. Bounces off the first man to hit him. And that was Aaron Marshall. When you're only five foot nine, you don't have to bend over far to get your shoulder pads down underneath the tackler. That's exactly what he did that time. He took that inside shoulder, popped him, ricocheted off, and moved the ball up for four yards that he wouldn't have gotten if he hadn't had that kind of ability. Tim Carpenter. The tight end is to the left side of Frost formation. Schuster, the fullback, was effective in their first series. He'll lead the way for Evans on an ISO play. And fumble! Colorado at the third turnover of the game. Watch Russell, number 16, who is having a huge afternoon. The Buffaloes will take over. Matt Russell moving inside out. We've uh, mentioned him many times. There he is in the middle of your screen moving inside. Out. He crosses the face of a blocker, goes under the other. Now he just keeps right on hustling. The ball's on the turf, and he's the man of the hour. He's right there. You keep turning it over, you're going to lose the football game. That's all there is to it. Hannibal Navy's in on that. Yeah, and I charge that ball loose, and Russell recovers it. And now Corey Detmer and the Buffaloes will go back at it at the Cornhusker. 39-yard line. Great field position. They can open up their approach offensively. They can attack a little bit more. This is what they like to do. Now, Nebraska's defense all year has played awfully well in this situation. They don't give up many scores following the turnover. Kid goes in motion. Trotman is the running back. Dutmer Wistrom's got him. Wow. Wistrom throws him down at the 42. And what? a penalty flag. Oh. Delay of the game. They took too much time, so the penalty flag falls, and uh, Wistrom, you can see, coming off that block at the quarterback. He is awesome. He is, and Andrew Welsh, the tackle, you know, he's been injured. This is his first game back. He's missed some practice time. He needs a little help in pass protecting this guy. That time he got him leaning forward, then grabbed him and pulled him on by him, and he tried to strip. Did you see him use that right arm, Brent? They tried to strip the quarterback? Another sellout at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. With Dick Vermeil and Jack Arute, I'm Brent Musburger. Nebraska leading, but it is 17-9. Colorado with three field goals, representing all the points. First and 15, Detmer fires. Anderson drops it again. That is two drop balls by Anderson. Good adjustment from the coach's standpoint. That This time they moved the running back over to help on Wistrom. They have two people on him now. They have Chris Anderson, a big, tall guy, 6'4", going back after him on that comeback pattern. Just a little bit high. Should make that catch. Right. He should have. Wistrom's going to get held now, so he's going to get two guys on him. One man. Here comes Welch. Two guys. Tough to get to the quarterback with two guys on you. Second down and 15. And Minter 
shows pressure, steps into the hole and backs out, and Hess now goes in. Here comes the backer. Good call against that play. Troutman to the 39-yard line. Nebraska came with a change of defense, moved the defensive tackle over on the center's nose, moved Hess right up on the guard, played tough up there, and they popped it right in between him, running off the center's block. Good call. That play has been effective all day. Now it's third and ten. Tough to convert. McCarty brings the play in from New Heisel. Detmer needs 10 yards, as Dick said, for the first down. McCarty is to the left side of the formation. Staying to block. Tomic coming. Throw almost intercepted by Brown. It was not well thrown to Kidd, and Brown, 22, had inside coverage. That time it was it was his fortunate that he got rid of, rid of the ball quickly because Tomich came around the outside right then was going to sack him if he hadn't been able to throw that ball in time. And Brown knows he blew it. He had four interceptions coming in this game. He should have had his fifth. Now Mitchell. Great defensive series that time. Three plays and out after a turnover in your own territory. Good defense. Mitchell needs a pooch punt here. As the Buffaloes hope to play a little field position. Pretty good, pretty good. Going to be caught by Colorado and downed inside the 10-yard line. Good job for the punter and a reminder that at the conclusion of the game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. And today, Chevrolet is awarded nearly $6 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. So there have been three Nebraska turnovers today. But Colorado has been able to score only three points off those turnovers as you see the quarterbacking breakdown. It's not a good day to throw the ball. Miserable weather conditions out here, and both have been affected. But Detmer has been affected by a savage pass rush also. And there's a player down. <laughs> Last year, who plays the perfect game? Nebraska. No penalties, no turnovers. You almost never lose when you do that. Mike Fullman was shaken up on the play, the return man, and he is hobbling off to the side. Nebraska already has lost I back Amon Green because of a foot injury. And now Fullman, the main punt return man, joins him on the sideline, and he's going to receive a little bit more assistance. Needs a little more weight to put some pressure on. So clearly that left foot ankle area. And Frost brings him up. Dangerous field position. This is where Arizona State was able to attack early in the season when they upset the Cornhuskers down in Tempe. They handed the fullback, Schuster, and the Buffaloes were ready. So there was not that option look with that dangerous pitch to the freshman Ibach. Instead, they came ahead with Schuster and Murkison with Jones made the stop. Yeah, see, they did it. They doubled up on Olsen, took Aaron Taylor and Dishman and doubled him, but they couldn't block the backside of that play as he cut back in there. Therefore, no gain or a slight gain. Very conservative look now with the double tight, one wide out. The fullback in front of Evans. Frost brings the option. Pitch dangerous loose and Frost loose again. The ball was fumbled a second time as Frost went down to recover it. I'm surprised that they're running the option down there when you can run the other things within your game plan eff efficiently. To pitch that ball out there like that, down there in that area, see, you can gamble defensively when a team doesn't throw the ball very well, plus in that field position, you don't think they're going to throw the ball. I question that call. Big Chris Dishman saves the day. He recovered the fumble. Frost dove after the ball, and it was still loose. And Dishman was there. Now third and very dangerous. Coming out from their own four. Here's the fullback. And Colorado was ready. They stop him. This short of the five-yard line. And so it is three and out again. Aaron Marshall, number 90, the sophomore defensive tackle, did the job. And now the Buffaloes are sure to wind up with good field position. I think Colorado Buffalo defense is gaining confidence every series, Brent. I mean, they're playing with great intensity. That was a backup defensive tackle that went in there and made that play. So they're bringing guys off the bench. They're fired up. They're playing real tough. They're getting field advantages here. 
Let's see if Cush gets the good snap this time. Coming at him. And they pull Ooh, away. What a beautiful punt. Fielded near midfield. They bluffed the reverse. That was almost real dangerous. Down at the 49-yard line, Nunez. No need to get fancy there. You can play with half the field. Well, Monday night, 49ers and the Falcons. On paper, not much of a matchup, but I, a couple years ago, didn't Atlanta sting them down there, Dick? I can't even remember now, to <laughs> tell you the truth. But there's Mr. Monday night, Mr. Jerry Rice, number 80. He'll be in full flower regardless of what goes on. Some larger snowflakes coming down. and Now that Nebraska defense, the black shirts, asked to do it again. Tomich and Wistrom, the defensive end. Minter shows pressure. Now they back it out. Play faker comes Tomich, throws complete. And Hefner, the tight end, is inside the 35-yard line. There's a huge play for the Buffalo. A real good one. And they come with that strong running back fake up inside to freeze people. Move the quarterback out of the pocket. You'll see the tight end will come from here. They'll fake here and bring him out this way. Good job, good call. They've been running Herschel up inside there. He comes back out. He's got a little pressure, but he gets rid of it right there. Throws it accurately right down the hole. First down. An 18-yard gain for Colorado. Hess, the middle linebacker, backs back out. And it's Troutman. And he is slammed after a gain of a yard. Nothing doing that time. And you know who was over there. Mr. Whistler, what a football player he is. See, they did everything correct at the point of the attack. The guard pulled, the tackle pulled, but they could not cut off Winstrom. He's coming down hard inside, out there, the outside in, rather. And the reason they were bringing the outside linebacker that allows him to crash. One of the things about Wistrom, he never takes a down off. He comes hard on every snap. Second down and 10. They hand off and try to get inside him. And Troutman inside the 35-yard line. That time they stunned him. They took the defensive tackle, looped him out, brought him in behind there, and went right down the line of scrimmage and made the play like a linebacker would. It seems like all we're talking about is Wistrom. <laughs> Here it is. See that stunt? He's going down to the inside. The tackle came to the outside, and he takes him right into the play. Good change-up call by Charlie McBride, defensive coordinator. I think this is one of the great games I've ever seen a defensive lineman play in college football. This is remarkable what he's done out there in this game. Third down and nine. Wistrom's at an angle. Comes off the first block. Picked up by the second. Detmer goes in zone incomplete. Good changeup. They haven't gone for the score on third down yet. That was a good changeup call. He has a step on him, and James Kidd can fly a 4-3-7-40 guy running on Michael Booker right there, but just a little too much poop in that throw. Well, New Heisel and his staff down here were trying to decide what to do, and they're going to give it a crack here as Mitchell is now going to come on and they're going to punt and play field position. Originally, they'd had Aldridge, so there's confusion on the sideline. I don't know if they've got 11 minutes. They better call timeout. They better hurry. He's down. If maybe he'll take the five-yard penalty there. He... Dick, in this situation, I'm not sure that the five-yard penalty kills him. No, but what you want to do is get your, your protection all organized Four so snap. you don't get a block. No, that no, ball, I... the layer of the game. It helps. Offense. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I would have used the timeout in that situation. In other words, the five yards from this field position should not affect your punter that much. Yeah, I agree with you. But my point is, if your protection is not organized and they get out there late, maybe they get a punt block because someone makes a mistake. Got That's it. all. But you're right in terms of it's easier to push it for the five yards back. And he will try just that. Now, remember, Fullman was shaken up, and he's back. Hey, this is the championship game. <laughs> it really is. Loser out. Pay no question about button. that. Nice coach. Really Hangs gets it high there. again. They got to hurry, and they do not. A high bounce into the end zone, coming out on the 20-yard line, and that could be the break that Nebraska will feed off. Well, the snow coming down here, and John Saunders take us to the play of the day. 
Time now for the Burger King College Football Play of the Day. Texas advances to the Big 12 Championship game by knocking off a and 51-15. James Brown, 18 of 30, 336 yards and four touchdowns. Most yards ever against a and Michael Adams with that catch, six reception for 153 yards and two TDs. Well, here Nebraska leads Colorado 17-9, 2.04 remaining in the third quarter. Timmy Carpenter, the tight end, the left tight end, and two tight end formation that time moved. So Texas goes to the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship in St. Louis next Saturday with a record of 6-2. and two. Texas Tech and Brian Hansford, they played well against Nebraska into the second half. That team, I suppose, could go to the Aloha Bowl. We'll have to wait and see. Evans could not get off black at the 15-yard line. He is down for a loss. Now, Evans, a freshman, is being asked to handle virtually all the snaps from the IBAC spot because not only is Amon Green out, but we get word now that Damon Benning will not return because of a sprained ankle. So D'Angelo with 19 carries for 109 yards and a heavy burden on this young man because the Nebraska offense has suddenly gone stale here. Second down and 15. The Colorado defense digging in for a stand again. And the pass was complete out to the 20-yard line. Federal. Well, they don't get many opportunities to catch the ball, so when they get it, they better make it. Federal, a redshirt senior, just going right in that little zone, hooking up right there. When they spread them out, they don't get the eight-man front, Brent. When they're in tight, they're giving them the eight-man front defense, which has given them a problem to run against. For Sean Jackson, tight end. He's the receiving tight end. He checks in, and he's on the right side, coach, of the formation. Tim Carpenter, the other tight end. Schuster down in front of Evans. Looking for Holbein, bounces it to him, incomplete. And going to get a little restless in here. <laughs> Scott Frost disgusted with himself. I had an opportunity to visit with him a couple times here in the past couple days. And he said he feels so much more comfortable in the offense. He felt very confident. He could come in and both run the options and, and throw the ball efficiently today. But the weather is affecting him just as much as it's affecting Detmer. Well, Nunez set to return as Cush comes back out to punt again. Now, he has punted very well. And 40 came across, and one of the offensive linemen flinched. That was Barnes of Colorado who came into the neutral zone. And then one of the offensive linemen simply flinched on it. So they'll back Osborne up and uh, well, Tom Osborne said the critical thing today would be the kicking game. And actually within the kicking game, Colorado has played much better than they have all year within all phases of the kicking game. Dead ball, ball start, offense. So five more yards of field position. Well, Colorado's had the advantage field position-wise this second half. They just haven't taken advantage of the advantage. Go get it! Go get it! Some of the crowd wanting the Buffs to block a punt. Kush, a good punter. Good snap. They come after him, and he gets it off again. Whoa. Luck puts it in. It's a beauty. He drives Nunez back to the 35-yard line. Nunez runs into his own man, and Hessel bring him down at the 32-yard line. Fumble! And they say it's down. They say it's down. Nebraska pleading its case, but they won't get the football. Demonstrating how important special teams are to Tom Osborne and staff. You said it was Hess. He's the starting linebacker down there covering punts here going into the fourth quarter. Actually, his old man initially got him. There's Hess right there stripping him. Yeah, yeah he was down. He was down. I never have understood why the ground can't cause a fumble. 
I always, if it's a fumble, it's a fumble. Well, yeah. that means the ball's down. Yeah, I, I think it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless, we'll talk about that later. First down at 10. Detmer now, and Troutman has to come up a little bit closer. Make sure he understands. Gets the call, and Minter comes right off the corner from that linebacking spot, but there were penalty flags down. See, he read the blitz coming. Dead ball, before the snap, false start, offense. And he audible, and sometimes that audible also changes the snap count, and that fouls you up offensively. There's Mittner coming off the corner right up there on top. He's made two good plays already today doing that. Batted two passes. Now, of Very course, that's the linebacking spot that was occupied by Terrell Farley until his suspension. Mentor was the starting rover or strong safety here at Nebraska, and they simply moved him up to that spot. Yeah, that's your school record's going to be hard to break <laughs> for years to come. Going to have to try hard. This is a tough stadium to operate in. The sellout crowd is not making it easy, and why should they for the Road Warriors? Colorado comes in here having won 10 straight games on the road. Rick Neuheisel hasn't tasted defeat as a road warrior. 22 seconds remain in the third, and it's 17-9 Huskers as you look down on the Sea of Red, the third largest city in the state today. The entire state rallies behind this great football team, hoping to somehow three-peat, hoping to get on a run. Now Detmer rolls outside Wistrom, deflected, incomplete. That was Jamel Williams, I think, Brent, that deflected that one. He's played well the whole time, or was it Booker? That was Booker, number two. Yeah, it was Booker. Pressure, pressure, pressure. That's what the third or fourth pass batted around in the air today. It's amazing. He's averaging just, you know, I suppose about four yards an attempt is all he's getting against this savage rush. Second down. Troutman, nothing doing. Hess was there. Hess got him first, the middle linebacker, who made that big play on the punt team. Number 44. They came with the blitz up inside, stunned the tackles, brought the middle linebacker right up that center guard gap, got the good penetration, no place to run. We're through three. The Nebraska defense holds on. We'll return with the fourth quarter after this message and a word from our ABC station. So we get ready to start the final 15 minutes of regulation with Nebraska leading Colorado 17-9. And Colorado with a third and 17. They go empty in the backfield. Detmer going down. Jamel Williams sacks him at the 20-yard line. So that is the 46th sack of the year by the Cornhuskers, and it could not have come at a better time. They have forced the Buffaloes into punting. See, they were in a no-back formation, no running back there to help at all. And remember against Florida last year, when they went empty with no backs, they came after him. That's what they did that time. No one to help pick him up. Mitchell standing back on the Colorado five. Three deep men. And Bowman will be the middle receiver. Low, low, low. It will roll dead at the 45. The sights and sounds of the game from Lincoln. Nebraska, D'Angelo Evans, the freshman, their lone healthy eye back right now, slips through the right side of the line for a three-yard gain before Matt Russell makes another stop. 
taking a look at the numbers after three quarters. Pretty even football game when you look at the first downs and plays run. What's hurting Colorado is in the in the turnovers right here. They only got three points, one turnover here. Nebraska gets the seven. Osborne substitutes four receivers. Holbein, Brown, Cheatham, and Jackson a tight end. Check in, a shotgun formation. Inside handoff, Evans, and he's going down at the 49-yard line. This will leave Nebraska with a third and four. I can't say enough nice things about how well Colorado's defense has slowed down at a, a very outstanding offensive football team that came in averaging 438 yards a ball game, over 300 yards a game rushing, and they're just playing a toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Now, Federal motions out. Jackson to the other side of the formation. Holbein and Federal to the left. Frost looks in that direction. Incomplete. And it... The Federal went inside and then tried to stop and come back to the outside. And I don't know if the guys are getting a good enough traction. You'll see this happening now from the left side of your screen. He's going to go back to throw it. There was a movement coming inside. He planted to go outside, and he couldn't get back out there to the ball. Tough to come one direction, then back out on a slippery turf. Dick, I'd keep an eye on Wheeler, the defensive back for Colorado in this punt. He's over on the left side of the formation. They've worked a couple of tricks where he has been able to get some daylight in this game. Now he backs off and makes it look like they're going to go ahead and set a return this time, which they do, but we'll have to keep that in mind. Nunez bluffing into the end zone, coming out on the 20. So Colorado, 80 yards away and trailing 17 to 9. Grant Wistrom from Webb City, Missouri. 10 tackles, a sack, numerous pressures here today. And Brown, the freshman, holding up. He has broken up five passes for the black shirts here today. Detmer and the Buffalo is ready to go again. Troutman, who's gone the distance as their tailback, is set behind him. He'll carry again. And it was Jamel Williams. Tomich was being well blocked that time, coming to the corner, but they couldn't handle number 28, Williams. Well, Tomich is the guy, though, that forced him to go ahead and get outside, Brent. You'll see him right there in front of the referee. Boom, he's outside that tight end. See, and he forces it, the ball to bounce to the outside there. And I think they're actually holding on to him coming inside out. Maybe that's why he wasn't moving. <laughs> that was McCarty, the tight end, who was helping block or tackle, depending on one's point of view. He's gone to the Wistrom side now. And Troutman and Tomich coming up. And they sandwich him at the 20-yard line, and down he goes. They tried to full block that time, meaning to block the center back to the right and step Big Nioli around to block it. They got a few yards, but not many. Trying a change-up blocking scheme inside. 56 Foreman, you just looked at him. He, of course, was scored the touchdown for Nebraska. That put them ahead. Actually, tied the score at six, and then Chris Brown's extra point made it 7-6. Third down and nine for the Buffaloes. Show bump and run, Detmer fires over to the far side. He's got Kid. Kid's got it at the 40. Inside the 40. Kid will be out of bounds at the 28-yard line. The Buffaloes are in business. I think they caught Ralph Brown looking back into the backfield right there, and he went on by him with a little move. And Kid can fly, as we said earlier. He runs a 4-3. Good rhythm throw. He's going to set up and just let it go deep to the right side of your screen. See, he had him peek badly. Brown was, I think, peeking into the backfield, not watching that wide receiver, and Kidd gets one on him. Great really, the through. longest play of the day, 51 yards down to the 28-yard line, and the Buffalo fans who are here from Colorado are ecstatic. First down now. Troutman behind Depper. Double tight end. Slot right. End of rounds coming, and it's a bad play. Oh, baby, did they eat Savoy up. Brent. That is just handing it to a Nebraska team that penetrates with speed like that. That's a gimme, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, brother. 
How many times have we seen a reverse break the momentum of a good drive? It takes way too long. You're a pressure defense. McBride had called the blitz, and there's Hess sitting right back there. I'll tell you, second and, and a, what, 22 to go? It's amazing what that play just did to this football game. 10-23. Now they go empty. Detmer's going to hit Troutman out here on the right flat. Warfield, the free safety, makes the stop at the 42-yard line, and it'll be third and 22. Wow. Dick, the best thing for Colorado to do right now is to get themselves back in a field goal position in this situation, get the three, and get out of here. I agree with you 100%. They've got a field goal kicker that's gone three for three. I've always, you know, with my philosophy in calling offense, not that I'm right, Brent, when you had momentum and moving forward, don't do anything really delayed and call a momentum-breaking type play. Now, Carruth, who's been very quiet, is slotted to the left. Detmer looks right, near side, throws middle deep, and it is picked off and then taken back. Cut! Savoy! takes it back away from the defensive back at the 10-yard line. Oh, oh. What a play by Savoy. They were all over each other. Booker, I thought, had it, and he just got it taken away from him. Threw the ball up high, which was a real good technique. You get it up there high, then the bigger receiver has a shot at it. So you got it up there to the left-hand corner of your screen. Booker's got it. No. Nope. Oh, <laughs> Excellent job by Savoy. Six-foot-three guy. And Booker's an experienced player himself at 6-2. They both get it. Super play. So it's first down. Fake Troutman, roll right. detmer has got to throw it to avoid the loss. Incomplete. McCarty had bounced on the short hop. And there was that fierce Nebraska pressure again. And it'll be second down and goal for Colorado. Jason Peter and Grant Winston, they get back there and shake hands with the quarterback. Yeah, Nebraska is really tough in the red zone. They don't allow many people. Can you imagine playing the game for the championship at the end of the year and only had to have play defense down there nine times? Pretty good defense. And this guy has to come up with a real good call right now because he calls the play in the red zone himself. Now Detmer, second down and goal. Savoy is slotted to the left. Fires the kid high and Brown deflected it away. It'll be third and goal. And that's his sixth pass defender today. They're going after the freshman. You better go after the senior. That freshman's here to stay. There you are. Number 22, top your screen, Brown. They're going to run a little delay right in there in front of him. The ball's thrown high, but regardless, Ralph Brown was sitting there waiting to make the play. He no longer a freshman. No, it's by November. this time of year, it's ah. November. Colorado's done an awful good job down here. It's third and goal. Two tight ends. Kill oh. is out to the right and Caruth to the left. Gonna work, look for Caruth. Gonna work to the corner. Double coverage. And Brown is there again. Brown behind him. Warfield in front of him. He looked back and Caruth was doubled up. And it's field goal time again for the Buffaloes. See, what he had help inside so he could sit outside. See, they had him I and O, inside and outside. So he sits out there and looks like the hero, and he just batted that down on purpose. Well, here comes their point maker of the day, Jeremy yeah. Aldridge. Maybe he didn't bat that down on purpose. Why should he bat it down on purpose and give him an opportunity to kick a field goal? But it looked like that's what he did. Here comes the 27-yarder. Good. Where's that guy been all year? He's good. Huh? Uh -huh. Four for four. To 12. The young man from Federal Heights, Colorado, Jeremy Aldridge. He represents the Buffalo points today. And it's 17-12. Time out. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Ford Escort. It's new. It's nifty. Made for the smart, the intelligent, thrifty. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Kellogg's with good taste, nutrition, and value. The best to you each morning from Kellogg's. And Dr. Pepper in your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor orders. 
eight minutes and 46 seconds remain here in regulation. It's a five-point football game. Kicking off for the Buffalo. And Leslie. Jason Leslie. With Wiggins and Cheatham back deep. Picked up by Wiggins. Oh, nice Kirk hits him at the 26-yard line, and down he goes. Well, next Saturday, it's a Dr. Pepper kind of day. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship in St. Louis, Texas, against the winner here today. And that one, that'll start us off. Then come with us to Las Vegas for the WAC Championship, BYU against Wyoming. And then finally, in prime time, the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper, Florida, and Alabama. The big football game still ahead of us. Huh? First down and 10 now. Eight people up there. Nebraska has been stifled here in the second half. The toss to Evans, and that's good for a couple of yards. I tell you, Coach Colorado basically is saying, let's go after the run. This team is not going to move the ball down the field with the forward pass. I agree with you. See, they're in the three deep situation. That, in that, you know, that gives you a lot of area to throw down in between people down there, but they just don't feel that, that Frost could beat them throwing the football, and they're just going to take away the running game with those eight people. Tight end is to the left. That's Jackson. Holbein's out to the right. Look oh. Sack down, loose ball, fumble, and Colorado jumps on it. Hit from the blind side. And that ball was jarred loose by Navies, and Matt Russell gives them the turnover, and the Buffaloes with a chance now to take the lead. See, what happened on that, Grant, Frost set up to throw the quick slant. A three-step drop, and he couldn't throw. See, he couldn't throw. He couldn't throw. And bang! There comes Navy's in from the black backside, and I'll tell you, that is really tough. That's the second recovery by Russell today. They're one play away from taking the lead. Well, with eight minutes to go, there's a lot of time left in this one. Colorado will see if they can finally score a touchdown in this game. Field position, the 24. Ray Caruth's been held to one completion. Trotman bounces off the first would-be tackler and makes the most out of that. So Ray Caruth, one catch for 10 yards, injured his ankle in the first half. Let's go down below to Jack Aru. Jack? Well, Brent, this is exactly what the head coach for the Colorado Buffaloes, Rick Neuheisel, told his team. He referred back to 1990 during halftime. He said that team went back and scored points four different times to win the game. Look at what's happening now. Good defense, solid offense, a good kicker, and they're going down to try and score again. Second down and seven. Detmer steps up in the pocket, fires high. Intercepted. Pass is picked off by Williams on the deflection. Booker was the cornerback. Number 20 deflected it into Jamel Williams' hands, and Nebraska comes right back with a turnover. See, the outside receiver came back to the inside. Inside man on the slot came outside. They set there. Now, Detmer had time to slide up inside. You'll see here we got the nice isolation shot right here. He works up inside. There goes the other receiver moving, stretching the zone. Is throwing up in the air behind him, deflected. Big, big turnover. Makovica, the fullback, leads Evans behind the right side, and the defense throws him back after the gain of a yard. Wow. <laughs> Two teams ranked in the top five. Two teams wanting to go to the Big 12 championship game. Two teams dreaming of moving on to a big payday at the Alliance Bowl. It's been hard hitting. 6.38. Nebraska searching for any kind of offense here. Evans, the freshman. Couple of yards. So D'Angelo Evans today steps in because of the injury. Roman Green spin slices and pulls away to his 100 yard day but for the young man from kansas 
the biggest moments of the day are still ahead of him. He must carry the load now with six minutes to go. He must carry it with great awareness. Protect that football, cover it up with both arms, both hands. And Frost changing Jackson to the left side of the formation on <laughs> third down. Hit Russell, sacks him at the 10 yard line. Frost goes down. They're outsmarting themselves. Audible and defense change. The defense changed. Now they don't have the advantage that they thought they were going to gain with the audible. They run the blitz. Here comes Russell. Play action fake. It takes a lot of time. Russell reads it. Sneaks up underneath. He's got zeroed in. And down he goes. Boy, has he played a good football game today. Solid, solid candidate for the Butkus Award. One of three guys left in the voting. Now Kush, who has been a huge mainstay, got an will be standing game. back in the shadow of his own goal. Ready to punt again. Came in averaging 45, and he's got to be somewhere around that today. Wheeler on the right side. No, that's not a good one. Nunez going to let it go. It takes a Cornhusker bounce, and then he zips it out of bounds at the 44-yard line. So we'll take a break and come back with the Huskers hanging on. In the rain in Lincoln, no one is left, and the black shirts on defense are hanging tough for the Cornhuskers. Now they'll try to do it again. Detmer's hit. It is Wistrom with the sack on Detmer at the 32-yard line. Brent, if they're going to throw play action, they got to throw the quick play action where it's a, just a token fake and get rid of the football. That's the second time within this last few series that they've tried to delay play action, and they can't get it off. Top of your screen, 98, Wistrom coming around hard to the outside. That time, he goes underneath the tight end. A tight end cannot block him. That's all there is to it. A nine-yard loss, second and 19. The crowd alive in Nebraska. A slot formation to the left. The great Ray Carruth has been held to one reception today. Detmer looks for him. Detmer fires. Caught. No. Juggled. Incomplete. Carruth had it and then lost it right at the first down marker. And now it is third down. That was a real good throw, too. There he is in, in the slot, bending inside on a square end pattern, coming inside that zone. He just couldn't put it away. He's got to make that catch if they're going to win this kind of a football game. Easy to say, but that was a good throw. Eric Stokes added a little pounding for the Nebraska D. Third down now. Colorado with a tight end to the left is McCarty. Three wideouts. They slot Caruth to the right. Will Detmer look back Blitz. for 21? Has to hurry. Hit on the release. Gets it off. Caruth wide open. First down. 35. Out of bounds at the 29-yard line. A gutting throw by Detmer, and Caruth was running free. That time, Brent, they went with a zone blitz. They brought the outside rushers, but dropped the inside lineman out the cover underneath and let him work deep inside that zone. See, there's nobody there. Nobody there, no linebackers, nothing. That gave him that huge hole to run and advance the football. Here's the pressure inside. Now, see the tackles drop out of there, Jason Peter? I let Peter rush. A 36-yard gain. Here comes Troutman. They don't give up on the run, and Jason Peter doesn't give up on the tackle. So it'll be second down and 11 after that hit. Sometimes you can outsmart yourself, you know, and come with the zone blitz. With the trouble with the zone blitz, they bring everybody outside, and then they expect down linemen to back out and fill those inside zones like that, and they just can't get there. Here, they're going to force him to cut back, but there's enemies sitting right there. That's Jason Peter, and we've said his name many times today. Now Caruth has taken a playoff and he's back. The three pack is to the right and Caruth is so dangerous from that slot is lined up on the right side. Detmer looks in that direction. Has time. Receivers covered. Now comes left. 
and it's McCarty can't hang on. Just a touch high. He was the failsafe as Detmer looked back in that direction. I'll tell you, this is the finest display of defensive end play I have, I think, seen in the nine years of college broadcasting. Look at Wistrom, 98. One guy blocks him, two guys blocks him, and here he comes still putting pressure on the quarterback. Just an outstanding game. You know he's an outstanding student as well in pharmacy. Free pharmacy, third and 11. That is no easy way to go in college either. Third down and 11. Wistrom gets ready at that right defensive end spot. Troutman goes in motion. They're empty. Here comes the blitz. Fire incomplete. Baby, it's dangerous when you go empty on these guys. McBride just steps right in the gaps and comes after you. Just ask Steve Spurrier if you don't believe me. I agree with you. The last time they went empty, see, empty meaning the back is going to come out of there. That's an automatic say, get after them. And here they come because they have no one to help pick up inside. Here they come. They bring two guys there, cover everybody. Good, good automatic adjustment made by Charlie McBride. And look at, they're trying to tackle Thomas. I've seen Thomas do that a couple times today. That's the big right tackle. Well, here we come. It's fourth and 11. The rain pounding down, 258. Colorado must get inside. The Blitz again. Blitz, fire, high, incomplete, Nebraska ball. Charlie McBride has a lot of confidence in his secondary and the pass rush to blitz that fourth down play. A lot of coaches would sit back and say, I'll let my down four get after him and cover the best I can. He brings seven people. I'm out. Nebraska scoreless in the second half. 2.53 to go and a team badly in need of a couple of first downs, if only to give themselves some field position. The Colorado defense behind Russell, they played their hearts out here today. They go with the fullback, Schuster, and he crashes for a pair of yards, perhaps three, out to the 33-yard line. Nebraska's got 17 points on the board. One of them was a batted interception pass running for the touchdown. They have scored 10 points offensively. Tom Osborne has had the, the brain working. He's talking to Frank Solish, the fine assistant head coach sitting up in the booth that works for the offense. Could anybody have told us that Nebraska would have only three first downs in this half at this point? No, but that's how championship games ought to be played, Brent. Two good football teams battling nose to nose. But I'll tell you this. I don't know if anybody gave Colorado enough credit defensively coming into this football game. A.J. Kristoff and his staff have done a great job. Well, let's take a break and come back. Still 2.45 left. More great action tomorrow. High noon down in Tallahassee. Danny Werfel and the number one ranked Florida Gators. Play a call on their arch rivals, the Seminoles of Florida State and Warwick Dunn. Dick, who do you like in that game, Florida or Florida State? Well, Brent, we have seen Florida State. We haven't seen Florida. Florida uh, State going in a little bit banged up. You'd have to go with Florida. Uh, you'd have to go with Florida. You really would in Danny Whirlpool. Second and seven now. Frost runs the option, keeps it. First down for the Cornhuskers. First down at the 44-yard line. No one doubts his ability half. to run, mm -hmm. but that's the one dimension that he's still shown here. Certainly there's been very little of a passing game, and a couple of the tosses off the option have been shaky, and you can see how Colorado has shut down this offense. Oh, they really have. Nebraska came in here for the entire year with 35 punts. Here they got four punts, and it's their five punts here in the second half. A little breathing room, however, on this first down. It is big. That was a crucial one. 225. They'll go to work on the clock. Three timeouts remain for Nebraska. Two for Colorado. Fullback. Bust free for Schuster. Navy tackles him at the 43. And now the Huskers on the move. The biggest play of the second half has been Brian Schuster, the fullback, on the quick hitters. Yeah, they like to run that quick trap in, up inside, block the center back, pull the guard across, and just pop it inside. You'll see what I'm talking about. Right up in the middle, center will block back. There he goes. Here comes a guard across right there. That was that. That's got 64. Pops him right up inside. 
Russell and the rest of the Buff defenders need a turnover, need to get the ball back. Nebraska moving into scoring position. There's Evans, the freshman, slips a tackle to the 39-yard line. Did you see Matt Russell take on that isolation play, meaning the fullback isolated on the linebacker? Right up at him, just took him right on physically. Here's the ISO on Schuster going up in there. Pow! That's two good football players meeting. And Russell sort of won that battle because he got off the block and, and, and grabbed a hold of him. From the other side, there's Russell, 16. Look at, you could see the water just spray off the shoulder pads. I know it wasn't perspiration. Colorado uses a second timeout, giving them one, which could affect them. But on the other hand, the clock is running down. Osborne has brought it down to 133 with Russell receiving some quick attention on that sideline. The Buffs now must go all out for the football. And of course, tomorrow, Florida, Florida State. That's at noon. The skins will follow that. And then tomorrow night, we'll have Notre Dame and USC from the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Big crowd expected in Los Angeles tomorrow night. Should be a great setting in there. Meanwhile, the winner here will be taking on Texas. So it'll be interesting to see what Ron Paulus does. Speculation as to whether or not this is his final season. Remember, he has a medical red shirt here if he wants to use it. And of course, for the Trojans, I'm going to tell you something. That Russell, Daryl Russell, is one of the finest defensive tackles we've seen this year. Right, you bet he is. Second down and seven. One and a half minutes. Colorado came in a three-touchdown underdog. They don't look like a three-touchdown underdog now, do they? They sure don't. Frost starts the motion, hands to Schuster, and they're going to put it in the hands of the fullback. They feel that he is very sure-handed, more experienced, as the Buffaloes attempt to steal the ball, and now Colorado will use its last timeout. They'll try to keep him out of field goal distance here and give themselves a chance. Jack Aroot. Friends, we watched that run by the fullback. You know, since 1981, and that was when Tom Rathman was the last scholarship recruit that came in in the last nine recruiting classes that was recruited as a fullback. Here's what's happened with the style of play here at Nebraska. They have so many walk-ons, and because of Nebraska football, usually a high school player from the state of Nebraska is the biggest guy. Well, they've made kind of the walk-on program the place where they grab their fullbacks. That's the case with Schuster. You take a look at some of the walk-ons. It's been a great year for walk-ons. It always is here at Nebraska. These guys started as walk-ons. Many of them have now gained scholarships. But the one thing that's held out is kind of the, the, golden, the golden thing that they can grab at the brass ring, that position of fullback. That's what Schuster's got now. Yeah, exactly, Jack. That's a, it's quite a story. It is a story. You know, and he's a, a two-time GTE academic All-American as well. So that's a pretty bright walk-on. Well, here are our Chevrolet players of this game. On, Russell recovered a couple of fumbles. He's been outstanding as a linebacker. Wistrom just played a great game as a defensive end for Nebraska. And, of course, Chevrolet will make a presentation to the General Scholarship Fund of both schools on behalf of Russell and Wistrom. And now let's come up to the third and five, 127 remaining. Got to bring the house. Frost keeps it off the option, battles for the first down. And he made it, I think, Brent. Real close. Depends where they put it down. See, again, they're running that option. The defense is stretching it. They cut off the defensive tackle inside. That opens up the lane, and the quarterback's taking it up inside. And a first down with 121 to go. Colorado out of timeouts. They can't stop the clock. They'll have to go all out, try to steal the ball from Schuster or Frost. They can't stop it. They can start flopping on. They can just flop on, Brent. They really don't have to run a play. So that's what they're going to do. Run has done it. There's the formation. And 
Colorado unable to stop the clock. Just a tremendous defensive football game here in Lincoln. And now it'll be Texas against Nebraska. They did not meet during the regular season. They will play in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship in St. Louis. Should be very interesting. There'll be some Longhorn fans coming up to St. Louis for that one. And of course, these great Nebraska loyalists, they've already, I understand, reserved hotel rooms. They did that earlier this fall. And the Huskers keep themselves at least in contention. They're not favored for a national championship to three-peat, but they're still alive. Tough loss for Rick Neuheisel in Colorado. They played their hearts out, especially on defense, as Osborne goes across the field to seek out his counterpart, Neuheisel. Nebraska wins it, 17-12. Nebraska goes to the Big 12 championship game. And tomorrow, high noon in Tallahassee, number one against number two. So long, everybody.